Welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Special Call Transportation Committee as of December 4th, 2019. Um, as is our custom, uh, we're going to go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'll start with myself. I'm Kelly Robinson, Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, Chair of this committee. And we'll go around um, County Administrator. Uh, County Administrator Mark Teal. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Ron Roberts, Planning Zoning Manager. Bill Peacock, the Director of Procurement. Miguel Valentin, Director of Transportation. Ramon Jackson Johnson, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and Vice Chairman of the Transportation Committee. David Haynes, Atlanta Regional Commission, and I manage the CTP program. Reginald James, Atlanta Regional Commission, Senior Planner, and Transportation Access and Mobility Group. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Uh, again, this is a special called meeting. Uh, we have a very short agenda. Um, Director Valentin, let's go ahead and hit it as you outline. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we had uh, one item on the agenda that was also a presentation uh, on Homeland Security. I'm not sure that those folks uh, are here. Okay. Uh, they are second on the agenda, so we could proceed with the first item since they're not here. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yes. And uh, the first item on the agenda is the Comprehensive Transportation Plan update. We have presentations by the four uh, consultants who submitted responses to our request for proposal. The technical review was completed. Members of the committee have been provided a technical analysis. This is a, a further step in the process, and they're going to give us oral presentations, and we will make an assessment in terms of how does that mesh with what we're looking for, how does that mesh with their technical proposal, uh, we will give them 15 minutes to do the presentation and then five minutes for questions uh, from the group. Okay. All right. Let's just go, jump right into it. Okay. We can grab the first one. Yes. Yeah. Croy Engineering is the first mm -hmm. consultant that will be presenting to us. Okay. okay. Is there a, a, a common tabulation which we're evaluating, or is this just going to be a free fall how we uh, uh, see it? How we see it. All right. Fair enough. presentation is by uh, Roy Engineers, um, a representative here. Go ahead, take it away. Uh, well, thank y'all for having us here. My name is Greg T. I'm the president of Croy. And I'm gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves. We'll sit down and Dale is going to start the presentation. Okay. okay. Marla. Marla Hill, Plans for Environmental Quality, uh, otherwise known as PEQ. I'm Amy Turner with uh, Core Engineering and the Tracking Plan Division. And I'm Dan Dobry with Croy, and I'll uh, be functioning as the uh, project manager uh, for the CTP update. Um, in a former life, I was the uh, director at Cobb County's DOT, so I've been involved in uh, comp comprehensive transportation plan updates before, uh, you know, dealing with the local agencies and regional coordination, etc. Uh, what we bring to you with the team that we've assembled are uh, local subject matter experts. Everyone that's part of our team is here in the Atlanta metro region. Uh, we've worked together before and, and have worked in Douglas County as well. So, you know, we, we're here. If you have a question, we don't need to call somebody in Minnesota to get the answer. You get it locally. We're very tied into the technological and innovative advances in transportation. We realize that, that cutting edge uh, things that enhance mobility and circulation have to be part of the plan. Uh, and we're very involved in that. 
we uh, understand that the community support is tremendously important. We go out of our way to engage uh, the public and the various groups, uh, seniors, millennials, etc., cetera, uh, to, to get that input that's very important for coming up with a project list. Uh, we understand the interrelationship that growth and development has with transportation, with uh, policies that support uh, job growth, that support housing initiatives, and how transportation is intertwined, intertwined with all of those to make for uh, Douglas County to continue to grow and uh, move forward with the positive experiences that you've already had. And we also have a great mix of both planners and engineers because we want to make sure that the projects that come out of the plan are practical, uh, fiscally responsible, uh, and buildable. So it's not just pie in the sky, we have a, like I said, a very good mix of uh, planners and engineers. And, and the intention is to, uh, like I said, keep uh, Douglas County moving in a very positive direction. One of the things that we did was, we realized that studies like this, a brand, branding the study, has uh, <clears throat> a lot to do with the public recognition and getting the word out <coughs> and feedback. So this was sort of our, we've gone through a couple iterations and we have uh, Douglas in motion as something for consideration. Now ultimately the brand that we would develop would be in collaboration with, uh, with Douglas County, with the committees that would be formed so that uh, you, you were comfortable with the message that you're trying to send with the project. But we'll, very good. I uh, did want to state again that everyone that's on the team uh, lives, uh, works in the metro region. And our team is, uh, we've broken it up into uh, <coughs> components, excuse me, where the, 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 the social aspect, PEQ, will, will lead the public engagement. Uh, we're part of the previous CTP, have a database of contacts and activities, so they, they would hit the ground running. Uh, uh, with us, uh, we understand transportation, like I said, is intertwined with uh, land use and development. We would have a placemaking uh, aspect to the projects. And Tanel Spangle Walsh, TSW, uh, is very uh, adept with land use planning, particularly brought them on for the special corridor studies that are part of the CTP and are very strong in zoning. We mentioned innovative technologies. Uh, Maldino and Wilburn has worked with the county with your ITS, ATMS work. Future Plan uh, does modeling. We, uh, tweak the ARC's travel demand model specifically uh, for Douglas County to get good results for future uh, traffic projections. Uh, Kinetics worked with, uh, with the county developing the Connect Douglas plan, uh, very uh, in touch with uh, the transit aspects of uh, what you're trying to accomplish. And then with regards to uh, safety, that's for all modes, all users, uh, Amy will be heading that up, has conducted numerous road safety audits, got her bicycle out, drove up and down, uh, rides up and down corridors to get the good information. And uh, Perez Planning, who's a uh, leading trail planner in the metro region. So, uh, as again, everybody's local. We've worked together before on projects and have coordinated well. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amy. So, we will accelerate your momentum. What does that mean and what does that look like? The county's first CCP was adopted in 2009. That was 10 years ago. Just think about how much has changed in Dundas County and the region in the past 10 years. So what we plan to do with this CCP update is to build on the success that Douglas County has seen thus far while we look to the future of what Douglas County can be. So what's been going on in Douglas County? Population growth for one. Um, over the past 10 years, since the adoption of the first CTP, Douglas County's population has grown by almost 10%. 
economic growth, one of the more exciting advancements in Douglas County is the number of job standards that are coming to the county. Um, Amazon, Stitch Fix, Google, these type of corporations are coming in and they're setting up shop in Douglas County. And that's a clear indicator that not only people want to come to Douglas County to call it home, but also employers. So our plan with the CCP update is to create a transportation plan and a network that is serving the growth that you're already experiencing while building for the future projections. Um, smart technology integration. Um, one of the needs identified in the first CTP was the ITS master plan. Since then, the county has installed ATMS infrastructure. You all have a traffic control center that is currently in process. You also have um, advanced signal coordination on major arterials. These are all advancements that will help you all um, make, uh, make it more efficient on the existing infrastructure. Connect Douglas, just this year, Douglas County rolled out its first fixed route transit service. So this is a clear indicator that Douglas County has seen a lot of big wins over the past 10 years, and we want to build on that success as we move forward and look to the future. So what's on the horizon for Douglas County and the regional overall. The ATL is here and regional transit throughout the metropolitan area will truly revolutionize how people move around the um, area. And with Connect Douglas, Douglas County has already shown and proven that they are tuned in, they understand the need for transit, and you all are moving forward with that mission. Uh, regional projects like the State Route 92 construction as well as the GDOT MMIP program uh, the I-20 at 285 interchange project, even though that's outside the county, that improvement is going to have direct impact on the traffic operations in Douglas County uh, along I-20 and the intersecting arterials. So we will keep all these things in mind, as well as tra trails and greenways. Uh, people want to get out of their cars. They want to truly enjoy the beauty of Douglas County. Smart corridors. Everybody thinks about the self-driving vehicles. But smart technology can mean so much more. Wi-Fi uh, wi hubs and activity nodes, as well as um, sensors and um, transit priority for the growing transit system in Douglas County. These are all things that are happening in Douglas that we can look forward to as we prepare this plan and we can build on to make sure that Douglas County is moving forward and really creating that sense of place for its citizens and visitors and employers. So, how do we plan to uh, update this plan? First, we'll create a, um, a GIS database and do an extensive inventory on the existing infrastructure. This will include the roads, signals, trails, bridges, and a number of other components in the system. Uh, once we have that inventory complete, what we will deliver to you all is a GIS, a GIS storyboard that is user friendly so that you all can have easy access so you can really have a map and understand what's out there already and where are those important nodes that we can work on improving. Um, once we complete the inventory, we'll start a system-wide assessment, the special corridor studies, and the transit service assessment. And we will do all of these things to come up with the needs assessment so we can identify the present needs of the transportation network as well as the future needs. Uh, throughout the process, we plan to coordinate with the surrounding counties and the local cities. Many of the major routes that are currently um, major arterials and have a lot of congestion are state routes. So coordination and working with GDOT throughout the process early and often is going to be valuable so that we can make sure that as we screen projects, they are viable and feasible to implement with uh, GDOT. Um, working with the ARC, um, we have extensive uh, history with working with ARC in the realm of planning as well as developing projects for the TIP. So our ultimate goal with this plan is to develop a plan that we can deliver to you all, that you can go out, secure those funding sources so that we can create a plan that, um, so that we can create a plan that the public can see those projects they're interested in. So with that, I'll turn it over to Marla, who will discuss more about that public outreach and education. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, I'm Marla Hill with PEQ, and um, I'm going to show you this just top button. This is the top right. button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, PEQ does have a history with Douglas County. 
in doing comprehensive transportation planning, as well as some other municipalities such as uh, Rockdale, Clayton, Henry, and we're currently working on the Southern Fulton CTP. So we're very familiar with the needs of that kind of project. And uh, of course, attuned to the need to have public input so that the things we propose are supported by the public. We have a number of technological advancements over the last 10 years that allow us to do a little bit different outreach, but we still believe in the high-tech, high-touch approach. So while we will make good use of social media and uh, Facebook Live to live stream meeting, meetings, uh, we have a technology that allows us to do real-time surveys, and uh, we would keep the website updated. Uh, we are well versed in posting what's interesting to laypersons as well as those who may have a little bit more familiarity with uh, the transportation planning process. So we bring all of these technologies together in designing a public engagement plan for Douglas County. In addition, however, as I said, there's still the high-tech, high-touch need and so we begin with updating the contact list that we currently have. We know that you've got uh, shifting demographics, uh, new populations moving in, new development, so we want to make sure that everything we're doing is current, that we're touching the right people, and that uh, interested parties have an opportunity to come in and give real input. Uh, we would include, you know, for example, the English as a second language communities, as well as other, uh, the faith community and other leaders within Douglas County. Uh, we'll look at new meeting locations. Again, things change. There may be new developments, uh, new businesses, and other opportunities to move our meetings around to make sure that all of the component cities have access uh, to the meetings and other events. Uh, we typically go through and identify events where we can get out and go to the community and meet them where they are. So that could be pop-up events like, uh, I believe we have Taste of Douglasville and uh, events in parks throughout the year. We would have a package to explain exactly what it is the comprehensive transit, uh, transportation plan involves and the input that we would want to receive from those public. So, we take that package and maybe get a booth at a farmer's market or just any other opportunity like that. We try to be very open and very creative. We listen when the community says, you know, we'd like you to come to such and such a place. We'll make that happen. Um, the other strategy that we use that has been very effective has been to establish a stakeholder group and a technical advisory group. The stakeholder group allows people with more general interests it allows uh, elected officials and uh, others who may be laypersons but still have valuable input to give on where the county wants to go in terms of its transportation systems. The technical advisory group will typically involve people with some planning expertise, uh, would definitely uh, include from the other cities their planning folks so that they would have meaningful input into what's going on. And the uh, other group that we would focus on would be people who are conversant in economic development. Now to uh, get more into the economic development portion of it, I'm going to introduce Greg to Three Thank you. So one of the things I think that makes Douglas County so special is the tremendous success y'all have enjoyed with economic development. And that's not been by accident. That's been through the hard work of the elected officials of the county staff. Um, just the announcement of the $2.5 billion investment for the switch data center that I know, uh, Mr. Robinson, you're very involved in. Those don't just happen. Those, that, that took a lot of hard work. But that changes the dynamic of Douglas County. That changes the dynamic of your transportation network. So one of the things we feel like is crucial is for all of these folks who have come and partnered with Douglas County, we need to specifically reach out to them. Talk about what do they need? What does their workforce need that is coming in? 
so that one, it helps us make sure that we're developing a plan that serves them, but it also gives you some guideways as you're searching for the next Amazon, the next switch, the next thing that you know, all right, here's what's going to be required for the county to accommodate that kind of uh, job growth coming in. So it's, it's been phenomenal what has been achieved. I mean, Douglas County has become the economic development hub of West Georgia. And it's, it, you know, you're pulling in folks from multiple counties from, you know, hour drive away, you know, west, north, and south of here. Um, but you can't forget about the folks who've been here with you all along. Wellstar, right next door to us here, they're a huge employer. They're a huge um, consumer of the transportation network, so we have to make sure that we're paying attention to those things as well. The other thing is we've delivered a lot of projects right here in Douglas County that are being built today. State Route 92, which is under construction right now, we were the ones that worked with the city of Douglasville and Douglas County to get the NEPA document, environmental document approved on that one. Um, that's set to open in 2021. That's going to completely change the dynamic of northern Douglas County's commute back and forth to I-20. It's going to open that up to the hospital, to Arbor Place Mall, to the interstate. So as we're developing this plan, we've got to say, what is that major improvement going to do? The other part of it is, is working with ARC and Georgia DOT is also looking at those major projects that they have that are going on, maybe just outside the county, like the rebuilding of the I-20, I-285 interchange. That's going to change the world for Douglas County. Even though it's a county over in Cobb County, the backup from that interchange comes well into Douglas County. So that's going to change how Connect Douglas connects to um, both the Cobb Link and the MARTA system as well. So those are the type of things that being here, being local, being in this community helps us recognize and partner with you guys because the only way we made State Route 92 environmentally get approved is we sat down with Mr. Birdsong. We sat down with LeSean Bird Danley. We sat down with Sam Davis before he was on the council and said, who do we need to talk to? Who do we need to engage with? And that's the same thing we'll do with you. We want to sit down with you and say, who are the pastors, who are the community leaders that we need to touch and reach out to so that we can make sure that people are getting this information. We're not just going to build a website and hope people go to it. We're going to go to them and we're going to make sure that they know that we not only want, but we need their feedback. And the only way to do that is to be here in the community, partnering directly with you as staff and elected officials and making sure that we're delivering to you a complete transportation system that's not just roads, it's not just transit, it's not just trails. It's something that complements each other from top to bottom. So with that, I'll open it up and I don't know if... Uh, yes, there may be questions. Q &As. Yes. So with that, um, we're all available to answer any questions y'all might have. Chair, do you have anything? Um, I, I like the last slide, and it seems like you've taken a comprehensive approach um, to trans providing transportation here in Douglas County. Um, tell me what you see that is, if you evaluated the county, what is most needed for this time? I know we have trails and greenways, but also what about just the condition of the infrastructure? Do you feel like we need to have it uh, some wider roads or things of that sort? So. Almost every community we work with, and we work with almost all of your surrounding communities in some aspect, their biggest challenge is getting enough funding to maintain what they already have. You know, just uh, whether it's resurfacing, whether it's bridge maintenance, whether it's, you know, just capacity widens, intersection improvements, things like that. Um, Cobb County is actually going through trying to set their list for their next spots that they're going to have. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about spending almost 40% of the entire SPLOS budget just on resurfacing because they've gotten that far behind in it. So that's something that, as a part of any of these plans, and you're, you're starting to build this network, you've got to put that focus on what do you have to have just to maintain what you already have in place mm -hmm. and then build upon that. I'm Chairman Robinson, do you know? Yeah, yeah I'm going to piggyback on Madam Chair, which is to that point. Um, and I get the, the purpose of to give local governments a framework, and I understand it, it, it's about funding, right? Yes, sir. And um, one of the big things we're focused on, I mean, everything you said was great. You did your homework and knowing where we're at. But a plan should give me a, a, a blueprint toward the future. And you, 
know, some counties are just not in a position to think forward because it's like, okay, this is where we are. But what if a county, can, like, we can do both? If Wall Street challenges us when we get our last spots to come up with a long-term capital plan, I would think that my, my consultant will be able to help us bridge that gap, not only just for the short term, we got to research the road. Yes, we got to do that. But I got real infrastructure and growth needs, right? Um, I've got roads that need to be cut. Um, I, I need to expand it. So I'm, I'm trying to get a feel, how would you help that need for us? I mean, would that be addressed in this plan that says, yeah, we got short term. I know this is probably what a five year outlook, but there's some, some bigger capital issue. I mean, how, how, because it is funding. In your opening comments, we're talking about how do you bridge that? So uh, the way we bridge it is we'll, we'll actually end up with two different recommendation lists that come back to you. One will be just the, the long term outlook yep. that will blend right into mm -hmm. the ARC's plan, and then we'll have a financially constrained plan. And part of that will be from sitting down with each of you and talking about. Okay, you, one of the things I think y'all did that was very forward thinking in your last squash was you set aside $10 million for economic development transportation projects. That's something other counties are not doing. They're not allocating things like that to think forward like that. So knowing that you have that mindset, what we can do is one of the things ARC and Georgia DOT have really shown since the passage of the um, transportation revision tax back in 2015 is if you're willing to put 50% of the skin in the game for these major regional projects that are benefiting not only Douglas County, but some of your surrounding neighbors, they'll come to the table with that money. So part of this is in working with GDOT and working with ARC are identifying which one of those saying, all right, we can put this much SPLOS money in, we can put this much bond money in, what can we expect to come out of the Georgia DOT funding, federal funding, and identify that as well so that you can get a lot bigger return on that investment of those local dollars. Yeah, and that, I'm, I'm a big proponent of what I call leveraging our capital stack for our background is finance. So it's more about, so I'm listening for that, and for me, my, my, my vote is toward that's an important how you help us accomplish that. It's great to have a plan, but if I can't implement it because it's not clear, if I can't fund it because it's not clear, then we just went through an exercise to, to tell ARC, well, we, we checked the box. Right. We really want something, so um, we're, we're speaking so you can hear where our minds are, and right. if that makes sense. So it's no, it does. It, it's just give context. And so, last question, I, I'm, I'm going to stop, keep this properly. Reasonalism is important. Um, I get the fact that you focus on what I want to call local deficit, and you should have our plan, but we do have test points. We're not on an island, right? There are, uh, so how would you approach, uh, and again, I connect Douglas acknowledges our, our capacity to be able to say, like, okay, we're part of a bigger system. So are, will there be opportunities or uh, sub-recommendations? I mean, how would you help us acknowledge that we're part of a bigger picture, right? It's, it's, how would you do that? Recognize that we're not actually being consulted with guys next door, but at the same point, how do you help us posture? I think the best way to do that is to reach out to those neighbors and make them a part of this process. Mm -hmm. So Cobb County is actually going through their CDP update right now, right. Mm -hmm. and um, we're very familiar with with them. And you know, particularly for Commissioner Cupid, who has the district that borders most of Douglas County, right. is sit down with Commissioner Cupid and say, okay, what what's in your plan? What are you what are you doing with your CDP? Same thing with Fulton County. Same thing with Carroll County, Paulding County. We work with all of these counties. And we have those relationships. So we know a lot of what they have going on already. But again, I think it's very important to reach out to them and sit down with them with Douglas County and say, we want to not be on that island. We want to know what you're doing. We want to let you know what we would want to do and how do we partner together to make that happen. Because the stuff that goes along I-20, if you're not involved in Cobb County, Fulton County, and Douglas County in it, it's not going to happen. Because anything that happens on State Route 6, it affects all of them. Mm -hmm. So having a uniform plan that everybody is bought into is key to the success of that. And I will tell you, and David can throw something at me after I leave, mm -hmm. when ARC and GDOT see that kind of partnership to where you have everybody bought into it, it definitely helps in those funding requests from those outside agencies. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. 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 I just have one more question. Um, 
again, like I said, I love the, the approach, the comprehensive approach, but we have uh, the, the Eastern Wall of the County that's really maxed out in terms of just building. And how do you have uh, some specific, a uh, specific targeted uh, type plans that you can look maybe in our western core of the county that really is still in its infant stage that really need to be built out in the future in terms of transportation, green tra trails, and greenways? It, it, well, and that's one of the reasons we have one of our <coughs> partners that we have on the team is uh, uh, Tanel Spangler and Wash. We've done a lot of work here in Douglas County, and they're particularly about land use. So a lot of times if we can plan these corridors, plan these areas to where they help foster some of that economic development that needs to happen in some of those areas, because you're right, everything that's close to that Fulton Cobb line, that's where everybody wants to be. But when you really look at how your workforce population is coming in, a lot of it is driving through western Douglas County to get to those work centers. Mm -hmm. So how do we develop a plan that says the next switch, the next Google, the next Amazon takes a harder look at western Douglas County and over eastern Douglas County? I think that helps just kind of balance it out because from a congestion standpoint, from a, mm -hmm. a spending standpoint, it makes it much easier for you to distribute that traffic <coughs> out if everything is not in this one little pocket. Mm -hmm. But part of that's just making sure that those, because there's, again, part of that's when we sit down with those economic partners and say, okay, why did you pick this part of Douglas County? What, what could have moved you to Western Douglas County and having that be a part of this plan? So as we're developing these projects, it's recognizing here's what will help make that next decision point be more likely to happen in the area where y'all would like to see that grow. Yeah, one, one last one, 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 one last question to that point, because this, this is key. When it, <coughs> what we've noticed in, in, in total as we've sort of uh, taken the helm is, for example, we used to one road. This administration did nothing to get the benefit of it, right? In other words, all that dark ride, all that road <coughs> on the riverside was cut when we showed up. It was done years ago. <clears throat> right. Then years ago, now we had to go hunt the companies to come here, right? In other words, there was an infrastructure, there was an investment in the past Correct. to prepare for the future. So here we are, we're saying, okay, I may not be here 10, 15 years from now, per se, but, but what can we do? Because it, it's, it, you got to think forward, mm -hmm. right? So how do you sustain your, your, your local economy? How do you, how you, it, 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 so we're trying to listen, we're listening for, will you help, well, what you deliver can it help us anticipate um, cert or, or provide certain options of consideration, recognizing we have different culture areas in our county, right? I'm very dense. I look like right. Cobb and Fulton. The West looks like Carroll and Paulding. I mean, I mean can, do you overlay all of that in this, or is it just more of a, a cookie cut? Right? No, it, and that's part of working with ARC. They have, in addition to the traffic models, they have their land use models, they have the population centers. So all of that integrates very closely into that overall plan. Because just like you said for Thornton Road, if you can say, all right, how do we create a Thornton Road corridor in Western Douglas that's going to foster and anticipate that kind of growth, that's good for everybody because that spreads that density out. Mm -hmm. It spreads that demand on the infrastructure out. So that's, that's definitely something. And as we're going through and scoring these and, and helping you guys decide what are your priorities, because you're always going to come up with a list that's greater than the amount of funding that can be identified. But how do we get in that constrained list those that have that biggest biggest impact on Douglas County? Not just transportation and traffic, but economic development, population growth, job opportunities, <coughs> like that. That's all a, an integral part of this, and that's the reason I love this slide as well, is this is not just looking at the road network. This is looking at Douglas County as a whole and say, <coughs> how do we make this be what Douglas needs it to be? Thank you, Mr. Trump, taxation. Uh, direct thank you, Derek Valentine. Yes. Bring us home. Th thank you very much, Chairman. A quick question. Douglas County obviously has pretty good access via I-20 to Atlanta. Well, that might be a relative term during peak hours. But <laughs> point being, we, we know how to get there. The issue is, how do we get people to where they live, uh, work, and whatever off of I-20? And I'm concentrating, I'm concentrating in particular to the corridors. You mentioned, or somebody mentioned, uh, that uh, there are certain corridors, most of them being uh, Georgia DOT state routes, 
and that is very true. But how would you approach a, a corridor that is um, densely, perhaps close to being maxed out, densely developed? It is a major, or at least an arterial road, and it is the main conduit to get people off of I-20 to where they want to go. What were you? What would your approach be to providing that connectivity when the capacity just is being maxed out? So a part of that is going to be, again, working with GDOT and ARC to see, because again, if you're doing those improvements on their roadways, they're going to have an input on it. But what I like to see with that, and I think this goes to the, to the development opportunities, is is there another roadway that maybe parallels that route or that can be made to parallel that route that you can do those improvements on so that you're not destroying the economy in that densely populated area that you have. So an example is State Route 5, Bill R. One of the things that's been on and off the drawing board for years is putting like an HOV access at Bright Star Road. You know, that, that's, that's one we've actually looked at ourselves. And what we've seen with the development of the express lane network through Cobb County, where, where we're headquartered, the express lanes have made all the difference in the world. So you've taken, and you're, one of your major access points now is Roswell Road, which didn't have any interstate access directly at all, and now that's your HOV. You're starting to see that economic development come back to Roswell Road right there around the Big Chicken. There's a ton of redevelopment that's happening right there because you've now taking the pressure off the north loop, taking the pressure off the south loop, and you've added that traffic that was needed for the economic development to come through there. So I think it's looking at where do you have some unique opportunities to say, instead of just trying to widen an already wide congested corridor, where can we take advantage of a Bright Star Road, which parallels State Route 5, and create some more economic development opportunities on Bright Star in addition to State Route 5? Okay, I don't have any other questions. Yes, I think that's all the time we can. It is, it is. Greg, thank you so much for you and your team. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much for the presentation, and hopefully we'll be in touch soon with you guys. We appreciate the opportunity, and if you have any follow-up questions, Bill, I know how to reach out to all of us. Thank you all. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. I'll just get some. That's for you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much.
presentation of the time passes around. Awesome. Thank you. Ready for us to start? Ready, please start. Okay, great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity this morning uh, to have the Jacobs team present our qualifications for the Douglas County Comprehensive Transportation Plan update. My name is Regan Hammond, and I will serve as your principal in charge on this project, working together with you, the Transportation Committee, and Michael, our project manager, and the rest of our team members to ensure that this project is delivered at, to meet your uh, expectations, as well as to ensure quality control, uh, the availability of resources, and to, and to ensure that this project is uh, delivered on time and on budget. The Jacobs team is really excited about this project. This is something that we have been monitoring and preparing for over the past year. Uh, we have a history in Douglas County, and we have a history as a team working together. So we're excited to bring those experiences and qualifications together to you uh, for this project. We, um, today with me, uh, Michael Cray with Jacobs, our project manager, Emily Ritzler with WSP, Steve Cody with RSNH, and Caroline Evans with Blue Cypress Consulting. And as I mentioned, we've all worked together before, not only as firms, but as individuals on similar projects over the years. So we are very familiar with working together and getting the job done for our clients. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael, who's going to lead you through our qualifications. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you all today. Again, my name is Michael Cray, and I'll be your project manager. Uh, I come to you with more than 13 years of experience in the planning industry. Um, in the past five years, I've served as project manager on three separate CTPs in Henry, Forsyth, and Fayette County. In addition, uh, I've been task lead on three other um, uh, CTPs. I started my career at the Atlanta Regional Commission as liaison to Douglas County. And um, in that capacity, um, I was able to actually work on the 2009 CTP, so I have a good famili familiarity with the baseline of what we're working with um, in this project. At ARC, I also was the um, Conference of Transportation Plan Program Manager. So between the projects that I've led as a project manager and program manager um, at the regional level, I have a really deep understanding of what needs to be done locally and also to meet regional goals. This experience will benefit you because I know how to deliver a plan that meets your needs within the time constraints and the budget that you set. So, in the um, written proposal that we provided you all, we identified six guiding principles. Today I want to take some time and just drill down on three, given the fact that we only have 20 minutes to present. I'm going to just talk about the three most important from, from my perspective. The first one is creating a shared vision. So a lot has changed since 2009. Uh, Ten years is a long time in, in, in the planning industry, and there's been a lot of population growth in Douglas County, and there's now about 150,000 people um, and, and very uh, diverse. And this population uh, uh, now may have different needs than those in 2009. The planning environment has changed as well. There's been new legislation at the federal level, at the state level, and at the regional level. At the federal level, we have the FAST Act, which governs how uh, uh, federal highway trust fund money is spent. Um, at the state level, the statewide strategic transportation plan has gone through multiple iterations since the, this plan was um, last developed. At the regional level, they've also gone through uh, multiple iterations of the region's plan and the transportation element of that, which is actually getting updated once again um, as we speak. So uh, it's a much different planning environment than, than was ex existing back in 2009. Uh, one, one piece of experience that will help you with this planning process is, is something that we did in Henry County. So with Henry County, we did a um, goals and, and objectives cross match, and we looked at, at how everything lined up from the federal, state, regional, and local level. And, and this is important because where you can find goals that align, you have funding opportunities. And so that's an important piece of this planning project. So, because of all these changes, 
It's really the perfect time to start with this new vision. This planning process represents a blank slate, something that we can work with you as the Transportation Committee and citizens of, of Douglas County to come up with a vision that meets their needs going into the future. This is something we've done in, in the past um, on South Fulton Parkway in, in uh, South Fulton County. We worked with a number of different municipalities to come up with a shared vision across boundaries for development along that corridor. The second principle I'd like to talk about is the idea of being inclusive and, tra inclusive and transparent. In our experience, we found that projects that we recommend, uh, some have full support from the community. Everyone's behind it. Other analysis may recommend projects that um, is more controversial. And so we found that in, in order to kind of manage these competing needs of different opinions, you have to build trust in the community. And the way to build trust between the citizens and this planning process is to be open and inclusive. That means talking to as many different parts of the community as possible. Um, that means citizens with loud voices, citizens that don't have a platform. We need to be, make sure and include everyone in, in that experience. And so uh, our experience in Fayette County, for example, showed us that if you use multiple means of, of public engagement, multiple platforms, you can really get a deep dive and get into all the different parts of the community. And the third and a very important um, aspect of our guiding principles is the idea of building a roadmap to implementation. <coughs> we know that um, working with the community to come up with a vision is very important, but ultimately what this plan is going to be judged on is getting things done, implementing those, those, um, those recommendations. <coughs> um, we understand that there's a, a, been a lot of great transportation ideas that were identified in the 2009 plan and before. One, for example, is the um, Southern Inner Arc, the Lee Road Extension, Beaumar Road, the idea to create a, a parallel corridor to I-20, south of I-20. Um, this has been a great plan, and, or a great idea, but it hasn't really been able to get a lot of traction for implementation. So this plan should set up this corridor, as long as the others that you've identified in the RFP for funding and implementation. Plans are great, but there's nothing like the phrase, open to traffic. Something that's personally gratifying to me is when I see plans that I've worked on in the past start to get implemented. And so one, one great example is in Forsyth County. In 2018, we, we did their CTP, was adopted in, in early 2018. That project list that was adopted was then used to create a SPLOS list, which was voted on by the public and approved later that year in 2018. So now they've got a funding source to implement their project. So that's something we want to bring to you. Planning, funding, implementation. So we want to talk about our qualifications as a team. Um, this map here represents all of the different CTPs and other um, relevant projects that we've done in the Atlanta region um, in the, within the past five years. This team before you here represents over 100 years of planning experience. <laughs> It may not seem like it, we're all looking very young, right? <laughs> um, but no other team can boast the amount of, of comprehensive transportation plans that our team can. Jacobs has done five transportation plans within the past five years. Paulding County, Henry County, Fayette County, Forsyth County, and Barrow. WSP has led two different um, CTPs in the past five years. RSNH, likewise, has led two, two different CTPs. So you will not be able to find another team that's been able to implement quality transportation plans like we have. One thing I'd also like to point out is that a lot of our experience is in communities that are very similar to Douglas County. This is important because doing a plan in the city of Atlanta or a fully built out county like Gwinnett County is a lot different than, than Douglas County. Douglas County has rural areas, suburban areas, more urbanizing areas, and those have different needs. We've been able to do plans that have, have incorporated all of those needs within one planning document. So, one thing I'd like to point out is that we have a lot of experience in CTPs, but this is not a cookie cutter process. We've identified a team of sub-consultants to meet your needs. We have, we have in-depth transit experience on our team. WSP is a leading, industry leading transit um, planning firm. They have um, done transit plans throughout the country. In the Atlanta region, they, are, they currently have an on-call um, planning contract with MARTA, 
and they helped develop the DeKalb County Transit Master Plan. Blue Cypress Consulting is on our team. They are a new firm that has quickly established themselves as an innovative, energetic, and inclusive firm for, for public engagement. We've worked with Blue Cypress on a number of different projects in the past. We also have RSNH on our team with Steve Cody. They are a, a, a nationally recognized architectural and engineering firm, and they have extensive experience doing corridor studies. Steve is our, our lead for the special corridor studies uh, portion of the plan. And he's not only a planner, but he's also an engineer. So with that, I would like to have our subs come up, and they're going to tell you a little bit about their, their experience and how they're going to add to our, our planning process. Um, we are so excited to be a part of the Jacobs team, and you know some of you I've recognized from before, but I also worked on the 2009 plan, and I was actually the PM at the end of that project. So I'm very familiar with the work that was previously done and understand the value that Douglas County has always placed on transit and why it's important to your community. And we've seen an investment over time that has continued to grow into the new system you have today. So a recommendation out of the 2009 plan to do a feasibility study has now turned into a fixed route system. So that just shows the, pro the value of a plan and having something in a plan to be able to get to the state of implementation. And as Michael said, that's something that we want to focus on as we move forward with this. Looking at both your short-term and your long-term needs. You know, reviewing your 90-day uh, plan review of the system that you have in place now provides a lot of good information for us to start to understand where to go next. And that's really, you know, the system is well-liked. People are using it. Your ridership is increasing, and that's fantastic. But there's also, as I said, some, a few glitches in there, right? So we want to work with you to understand what those are. How can we better optimize the system? How can we holistically look at this from a multimodal perspective and working with the corridors as well and engineers to say, here's a place where we could use technology that might advance um, the, the system a little bit more here. Or here's a roadway improvement that might contribute to helping this move a little bit better through the traffic that we know is out there. So looking at those short-term needs. Uh, we actually also have on-call contracts with both Gwinnett County and Cod County, so we work very closely with those bus systems from a range of operations and systems analysis, even to looking at their fleet assessment. So we can offer a broad service of what you need when you're trying to think about what comes next for transit. And then looking at how you want to expand the system and what those long-range needs are, and again, how do you fund it? One of the advantages of WSP is our record in getting grants from the Federal Transit Administration for transit projects. Since 2009, we have gotten over $16 billion of secured funding from FTA, more than any other firm. That, Steve? Thank you. We are also um, very, very happy um, to, to be part of the uh, Jacobs team. At, um, RSNH, we have worked on hundreds of um, corridor studies across the country, uh, do dozens in Georgia and in the re region. Um, like my Michael said, corridor studies aren't co cookie cutter either, but one, one of the things we um, uh, believe true with all of our planning efforts is, is to, to balance that transportation, land use, and interaction. Um, it's going to be key to ma make sure the uh, work y'all are, are, are doing and have done, both with county city comp plans, ma master plans, um, L LCI plans all fit in. Um, we, we actually worked with uh, GDOT on one of their first um, transportation land use corridor studies down by Fort uh, Stewart. That's, that's fun. We, we worked with J Jacobs year, years back on, on that planning study and are actually now watching things be built. So like my, Michael said, it's great as a planner and um, engineer to, to, to see, you know, see things happen. We, we also worked with um, Emily, M Michael, and Henry County doing a whole lot, like D Douglas County, looking at, at, at alternates to the interstate. Um, looking at, you know, trying to not, not have the interstate serve as, as a main street, but, but find alternate routes. So the, the corridors here are, are very sim similar in, in that sense. We, we also worked a good bit with interchanges and um, access issues, freight. Um, multimodal as aspects also. So all of those, those things are, are going to get wrapped up in, in corridor efforts because um, our key is going to be to make sure thing, things happen. Use innovative data. Um, and as My Michael said, our, our team ha has actually worked with ARC and G GDOT to, to build tools, both risk 
um, and environmental to help right size projects. So what's coming out of the plan, we can, can make sure it can get funded and then actually get built. So my, Michael will I'll talk more about that, but there's, there's certainly that, that piece to implement is certainly key. Thank you. And so now I get to talk to you about public engagement, and I'm so excited to be here and speak to you about that part of this exciting project. Um, as Michael mentioned, we've done traditional public engagement and are very comfortable hosting meetings and facilitating whatever your, your needs are. However, we also are really excited to bring some innovative and different techniques to the public engagement process. And um, we've, we've done that on a number of different projects, but uh, in particular, what I wanted to highlight was in Jackson County. We have recently wrapped up their transportation plan and um, working with Steve. And uh, one of the things that we did was to identify and really try to reach out to transportation disadvantaged and underserved communities. And one of the most cost effective ways to do that is through geofencing using social media ads. And so we were able to do that and send out these little ads that included a link to our online survey and that really allowed people to say, oh, they are seeing my community, this is really speaking to me. We ended up getting in Jackson County over 1,000 respondents answering our survey, which we thought was a wonderful return. And um, you really in appreciated using that data to both gather input as well as validate all of the data that we were getting from the other data sources. So I'm super excited to be here and bring the, those techniques and um, really tailor it to what your needs are in Douglas County and bring that understanding to this project. So thank you for having us today, Michael. So I wanna continue on this theme of kind of talking about some of our experience and bringing it back to Douglas County and see how it's gonna impact you. So I wanna highlight three projects that we've worked on recently. And, and talk a little bit about that. One was the Henry County CTP and Transit Assessment. This project uh, was a CTP <coughs> that had a full transit assessment that went along concurrently. Mm -hmm. So we looked at different fixed route options for, for the county that, that they could begin implementing. Uh, it's very similar structure to what we're doing now. So that, I'll be able to bring that kind of project management experience and, and that structure to what we're working on to this project in Douglas County. In Fayette County, we did a CTP and PATH master plan at the same time. And one of the things I'm really proud about this is the amount of public engagement that we were able to do. Through a variety of different techniques, we were able to really drive excellent turnout. We had two rounds of public meetings, um, two, two each, so we had four public meetings, and we talked to more than 400 people at those meetings. So we averaged 100 people per meeting, which if you've ever gone to, to, to transportation plan meetings, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> um, we also did two surveys and we, we got over 1,300 respondents to, the, to those two surveys. We also went out to the community, went to, to um, uh, festivals and uh, farmers markets and things like that, and we talked to dozens more people. All told, we got direct contact and input from about 2,500 people in Fayette County. That is a really good percentage of the overall population that we were able to talk to and get input from. So, some, some lessons learned from that that we, can, that we can bring to this process. One thing that really helped us out was media coverage. Um, we, we partnered with the media and, and talked with them and brought them there and they, they wrote articles about the project. So it's going to be very important to talk to people like, or to entities like the, uh, the Douglas County Sentinel and uh, the Douglas, Douglasville Patch, get that coverage and really start to um, uh, uh, get the word out about, the, about this project. We also used volunteers during our um, uh, inventory of existing conditions phase to get input on or to, to collect data on bicycle and pedestrian counts. So we worked with high school students from the Beta Club, the bicycle and pedestrian community, and other volunteers. And what that did, well, first of all, it got us some really good data to work with, but it also drove ownership of that project. So those people that were working on it were it had had something to be invested in through the life of the planning process. Finally, partnerships with the business community. Uh, the, um, the, the uh, Fayette County um, Chamber of Commerce was very helpful in getting the word out. And um, it's going to be very, likewise beneficial to work with the Douglas County Chamber of Commerce. The Douglas County Chamber of Commerce is very active, they have networks everywhere, and they'll be able to really help us spread the word. 
The last project I'd like to talk about is the uh, Government Estimator Project. It's kind of a weird name, but really what we do is we go out there and do project scoping for the um, Office of Program um, Delivery at, at GIA, OPD. So we go up there, we go out when, when projects are getting ready to, to go through the development phase, and we do upfront scoping, we do environmental work, we do bu budgeting and, um, and scheduling for that. Um, because they need to know what the project is before they start to do it. And so in today's funding environment, you will need a document that you can take to, to um, your funding partners and say, hey, here's where our needs are. You're going to be able to, you want to be able to document, um, we, we have a full understanding of what this project is. We know what the potential pitfalls are from, from an environmental perspective. We know how much it costs. We have a really good cost estimate. And so this experience from, the, from this government estimator project is really going to be beneficial when we talk about corridor studies and different projects that you want to get implemented um, in the future. So why Jacobs? Well, the first thing that's not even on here is we are really excited about this project. <laughs> this is a very important project. We, it's, it's, uh, it's been something that, that has been on my radar for years, um, literally, and, and I'm really excited about this. And like I said, I was involved in the 2009 project um, at, from ARC, and I would love to keep going with this um, at, at Jacobs. But we bring a tailored approach to this project. It's not cookie cutter, it's not can. We, we have, we've assembled a team specifically to meet your needs, and we're, gonna, and we're gonna do this through the planning process. We've got a committed project manager. Okay? I'm 100% committed, like Regan said. Um, I, I'm not gonna be, um, uh, my, my attention will not be elsewhere. We've strategically kept my, my availability open so I can be your point of contact and deliver you your project on time and on budget. We have unparalleled experience. No other team has, has um, done as many CTPs as we have, has, has delivered these successful plans like the Jacobs team. And finally, we have proven results. Like I was saying before, our plans lead to implementation. And that's really what we're going to be judged on here at the end of the day. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to us, giving us your time. And we take any questions or if, if you have them. Thank you. Chairman Jones, do you have any questions at this time? Um, it's not this specific time. Chairman uh, Robinson? Yeah, I do. I, I got a couple, and it just, you, you made me think. Uh, they, thank you all for, for, for obviously, um, your, if we have enough time, that's all. You have five minutes. All right, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, what, what, I, 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 I tend to be consistent so um, in how I approach these, so I'm going to come back to funding. Yes. Um, and on the over finance as well as this, so it, and housing, so they go hand in hand. Um, and so, from a funding, we're, we're, it's about leveraging our capital stack, right? Um, that's important. In other words, we've got local dollars, mm -hmm. right? but you know, we're too many roads, right? right. That, that's just not going to get you there. Mm -hmm. So, we, we made out of context, and then you'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. And so, I appreciate that I came in on 09. So, I, yes, I was here in 09 <laughs> in, my, in my 11th year, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, and to your point, there has been a shift here. It, it, it truly has been an ideological shift as well, right? So the thoughts in 09 are not the thoughts today, right? Even how you're looking at it, if I looked at the plan that was done in 09, it's like, okay, start now. Take PERS aside, because each administration is going to change that. That's not what I'm saying. But I think you get my point. It's just how we can look at what we're looking at. So there's been a maturing index kind of where it once was a sleepy, um, community, it's now it's awakened. It's got great new younger leadership. It's like, okay, now we know how to throttle this thing and grow it commensurately, right? So my question is, we're looking for advisors that can help us sort of like, okay, at the end of the day, it's great to have a box for our, our colleagues to say that we checked off the CTP box, but is it actionable? Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Is it actionable? Um, and action without funding. Now we're not, we're just saying, here's our assets, here's what we're working with, but Will you be able to help us in setting those priorities? Now, your goal setting? I, you're going to answer my question, but you, you see where I'm going. I'm, it's, it's important that you have to. It's important that our advisor delivers it in a way that we can act on it. In other words, can you hear our language that we're using? In other words, like it, 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 talk to. It. I, well, I agree 100 percent with with everything you're saying, and what the. the there's a lot of stuff that goes into this, right? We have to we have to talk with the public. We have to do our analysis, right? But at the end of the day, it's about coming up with a good set of projects and prioritizing those so you know what your, your top goals are. Yep. You, you have good cost estimates. And then you do a funding analysis. How much money do you have? How much money can you spend? And then 
can you use that money to leverage other funding sources? So um, I, I would say that is the, the, the piece that Jacobs and myself as a project manager excel at, is, is looking at, the, at that funding and, and helping you understand where, where, you, where your priorities are and, and where you can go to get those done. So if I may continue. So one thing, for example, in Henry County, Henry County is, has a lot of similarities to Douglas County, I, I would say. One of, the, their, one of the things that we noticed during that planning process was that they were not doing a very good job of advocating for themselves to the state, to, to GDOT. They would say, oh, we, we're not getting our fair share of funding, but they weren't up there talking to their representatives and, and, and doing their work, sharing what their needs are. So that's one piece, and so we, we helped them with that. We set up some meetings with GDOT planning and let them know what, here's the issues on the state routes in Henry County. And, and that, um, that's something that really should be part of this planning process as right. well. But then I want to keep a little quick rapid fire this. My, my second one I'll yield, which is related to that. And you, you sort of mentioned, I thought you were going to go there because um, Lee Road happens to be out of district too. Okay. And, and, and so it was acknowledged. Um, and again, we, we thank goodness for Miguel's leadership. Uh, because uh, of course you got Thornton Road, which is seasoned. Mm -hmm. You got Lee Road, which is emerging. Mm -hmm. And you got the West, we're really what we're going to do out there. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's what it is, right? Different right. character areas. And right. so, mm -hmm. but that, that Lee Road was important to acknowledge the fact that, well, we put real money into that thing, right? It's, mm -hmm. not, a, a, it's not a state route, but would you be able to, so I know the ARC and GDOT, that's important for them, but um, I, I think, uh, maybe Miguel will help clarify later. Lee Road is an important east-west connector. For us, yes, right. That opens up what I call, you know, I was looking for more of a that economic development engine, right? What, what helps facilitate that? Because a road to nowhere is like, oh, you got a pretty road that's resurfaced and you can ride your bike down it, but it's more holistic. And so, if you can answer, like, how does that work? Um, you know, just that type of connectivity, which is connecting three. Um, commission districts, all the I mean, it's east west. Everything is north south in our mm -hmm. county. That's our east west. And more generally, it's, it's not only just connecting those those districts, but also the region. We've got neighbors. I look more like Cod before to be in the east wall, right? And, and so, talk about for some that that's my thing. Lee Road, which connects internally, and then we have a broader connectivity to the region. Just how do you want to answer it? Well, I mean, so. How would you approach that? Well, I think with with the Lee Road corridor, for example, is it's been looked at quite a bit. It's been out there. We know we know what the, the idea is. And so this plan should really be there to set that project up for implementation. And that's through looking at the environmental constraints, um, doing your, your good traffic analysis, doing your, your alternatives analysis, and getting good cost estimates. And then something that Steve was talking about is right-sizing. You're not going to implement that all at once, but you can do some things incrementally to, to get that corridor going. And then another thing that Steve was talking about is the land use connection with that. So um, land use um, along the corridor is, is very important. You can talk about development along the corridor, <coughs> you can talk about access management along the corridor to keep, to keep it viable um, through the future. Um, so I think there are a lot of things during this planning process that can get that set up for, for implementation. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Just quickly. Well, I'd like to add, if I may, one of the strengths that Jacobs is, the Jacobs team is going to bring to you is a long-standing history of working with your funding partners of ARC and the Georgia Department of Transportation, as well as our federal agency partners. Emily already mentioned the success that WSP has had on helping clients obtain FTA funding grants in particular. But in addition to Michael working at ARC, I also worked there for 10 years. That gives us this intimate understanding of the funding uh, playing field, per se, here in the Atlanta region when it comes to working with ARC. Additionally, with our experience of working with GDOT, who, quite frankly, is our number <coughs> one client in terms of dollars <laughs> that we <laughs> you know, earn uh, working for them, we have the relationships to get not only ourselves, but you all at the table with the decision makers at the department, whether that be at the district level or all the way up to the commissioner's level, to have discussions around projects that aren't on state routes, like Lee Road, to see how we can position those projects to better compete for the federal funding dollars or the state funding dollars that are available. 
Chairman Jones, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah, just I, while you were speaking, Chairman, I gave me an opportunity to collect my thoughts a little bit. I was just, first of all, first of all, congratulations on the $16 billion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's a lot, of, it's a lot <laughs> of projects. Over 10 years. Uh, you mentioned government estimated projects, yes. and that's to me is a building block to determine the pathway for funding. That's uh, opportunities such as a splash or a T splash or something of that yeah. sort. Can you speak a little more about your building block? Uh, I'm sorry, the government estimated project. Uh, yeah. have you, that, did you utilize that project with Henry County and the other counties you spoke of? Or, how did they, what, what did they use? So for, um, so f this is a project that we started working on about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. with, okay. with GDOT, so that was before the, our Henry and Forsyth County projects. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing that we have used that, that, we, that Steve mentioned is actually um, ARC risk assessment tool. Mm -hmm. This is something that was, was developed um, by ARC's project implementation committee, I forget the name of the committee. Um, I think I think that was project, yeah. task force. <laughs> well, project implementation, project implementation task, task force. force. And so, and Jacob, uh, actually, the the same project manager who leads this government estimator project, he helped develop this risk assessment tool. And that's a way to, to easily run your projects through a risk assessment, which really helps you with your scheduling and and, and your funding levels. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so. Um, so that's one thing that, that we've done. And then this government estimator project really is, is, is an exercise that we're going to use on, on all of these corridor studies that, that um, have been identified in the RFP. Often in most plans, you have more projects than you have funds to deliver, mm -hmm. right? That's a given. So um, one of our actual specialties at WSP is doing the financing analyses and looking at different scenarios. So if you want to go down a path of looking at other local funding sources, such as a SPLAST or referendums that could, but we didn't even mention House Bill 930 with the mm -hmm. ATL. You know, as new sources might become available, those are the things that we can look at and run analysis and say, well, what if we did a quarter penny? What if we did a half cent? What would that get us? And then what would we be able to deliver? Would that be the piece that actually moves a Lee Road extension? To completion, so we can um, do very targeted financing um, scenarios in order to understand what your gap is and where you want to take it next. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and Chairman, just a very quick question, yeah. and, and Michael and, and Regan, mm -hmm. and I, I knew your faces looked familiar for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is actually for Steve. Yes, sir. Uh, on the corridor analysis, we have situations where. Some of the corridors are maxed out in terms of capacity, very close to. Right. And uh, we need to be able to get people off of I-20 and onto mm -hmm. their neighborhoods and business, businesses and whatever. How would you approach um, maximizing or enhancing the connectivity to those locations where you have to go through a very congested corridor? In terms of um, congestion and in terms of space, I mean, we, we've got it very smart, and, and we, we have in industry gotten very smart about operations. You can do a lot with operations. You can do a, a lot to try to move folks through if it's with access, um, timing, and look, looking also at, at sa safety. Um, and then and also got to kind of draw back, back up to the re regional level up also. We, we have many tools now. We, we can measure. We, we don't even have to model it any, anymore as, as much. We, we can measure now and actually see where people are traveling to and then from. We, we've talked about <coughs> buying streetlight da data source too. That's very you know pre precise way. We can go, go down to the parcel level and figure out where folks are like coming from and then too. So you know we, we start at, at, at that higher level Miguel and then you know go go down to the next level. But it will ultimately, you know, de depend on, of course, land constraints, any fatal flaws, the public, the outreach pieces, just make, making sure every, everybody's, you know, on, on the same page. But there's definitely ways to improve operations and then also make it look better and also make, make it be multimodal with bike, ped, transit, um, and other aspects. So we, you know, learn, learn a lot as, as an industry, keep on getting better and the technology now is just changing so fast that it's just going to get more and more exciting for, for us to implement um, projects quicker. So. Thank you so Thank you. much for Thanks. being with yeah. us today.
Thank you all. Great Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We'll okay. hopefully be in touch soon. Okay, that's great. Thank Thank you. Look forward to hearing from you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. yourselves uh, and when you speak please speak at the podium because this is being recorded we have a chance to introduce ourselves absolutely before. go ahead so um, well my name is Kelly Kemp and I'm one of the owners of modern mobility partners and the principal in charge we've got Kirsten down there Hi. Up out. Kirsten Hi. is our project manager yes day three of, uh, at Modern Mobility Partners. <laughs> and Jennifer? Yes, uh, I'm Jennifer, and uh, I'm the other co-owner of Modern Mobility Partners, okay. and uh, I'll be leading the needs assessment for this uh, CP. Okay. I'm Otto Clemente. I'm with Arcadis. I'm working as a sub with, with MMP on this, and I'll be leading the uh, special quarter studies task for the, the CP. I'm Julie Billings, I'll be Deputy Project Manager with Modern Mobility Partners. All right. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead. Are, are y'all going to say anything else? No, you Sorry. go right ahead. No, you go, go ahead. ahead. Yes. All right. So I want to first make sure I'm hitting the right button down. Or I think right. it's just the one button. There. Let's yeah. to the right. Thank you. You good? Okay. There we go. All right. Well. Um, again, my name is Kelly Kemp, Modern Mobility Partners, and I'm the principal in charge, and we are very excited to be here today to present to you on the Douglas County CTP. Um, so we were asked to give an overview of what was in our presentation, so we're going to go through our team, our experience, our approach, our understanding, all that stuff, but we're, what we're really going to do is focus on is what's unique about our team and our approach. Um, so Modern Mobility Partners is a local transportation planning DDE firm here in Atlanta. We have 10 transportation planners, modelers, and data analysts. Uh, we're actually one of the larger planning practices here in Atlanta now, so we're happy about that. Um, and then we have Arcadis as a sub-consultant leaning all the engineering, so traffic engineering, roadway engineering, cost estimates for the projects, etc. Uh, every single person on our org chart and that you see here is local um, and 75% of the budget, the DBE since we are the prime, 
And we have done over 20 CTPs in our careers, so we're pretty well seasoned in CTPs. Um, the top row here is who we have here today. Again, I'm the PIC. We have Kirsten as the project manager. We've got Julie as the deputy PM, Jen as a task leader for the assessment, um, and Otto's leading the special corridor studies. The other 10 below us are our support staff with Modern Mobility Partners and Arcadis. Again, all local. So I want to talk a little bit about some of our relevant ongoing experience right now. So it's very relevant given all the changes in the transportation industry. Um, so we are the prime on the Southern Fulton Comprehensive Transportation Plan with the ARC. Right now that's about two thirds of the way through. And one of the things that we're doing that's a little unique with CTPs is we're doing a proactive smart corridor approach, identifying opportunities for smart technology improvements. We are also leading the project prioritization on the Augusta <coughs> MPO LRTP, as well as um, the Warner Robins MPO LRTP. We just wrapped up the multi-award winning Virginia Avenue Smart Corridor Study, where we looked at um, new and emerging technologies as it relates to walkability, mobility, and safety, which is very um, transferable, and we do the best practices. I was the PM on that, and Kirsten, up until three days ago, was the client PM on that. Um, and then the Airtropolis Freight Cluster Plan, we are leading all the emerging technologies on that as it relates to freight. And um, we're about two thirds of the way through that as well. And then lastly, we are actually a major sub on the new ATL General Planning Consultant contract. And so we're leading all the project prioritization for that going forward, um, which makes our team unique because we'll have a good understanding as to what the ATL is looking for when they're prioritizing projects for funding. Um, but, you know, I can tell you how fabulous Kirsten is going to be as your project manager, but I like to have numbers to back it up. Um, I'm not going to go through all these in detail, but what this shows you is that Kirsten has experience coming from the Aerotropolis Community Improvement Districts. She managed and led the, their $200 million capital improvements program um, every step of the way through project development, so she knows how to get projects programmed and implemented and get funding for them. She wrote five successful grant applications. Um, she is uh, well seasoned at public speaking with um, boards and councils and the general public um, and really knows how to leverage um, and collaborate um, to optimize opportunities to get things done. Uh, and then she's always um, pushing innovation, making sure that ultimately she's leading a uh, you know, innovative yet implementable plan that's rooted in reality um, and is always going to be uh, pushing the envelope and looking forward. Well, I am so excited to have the opportunity to work in Douglas County. I've grown up coming to Douglas County. I remember when Arbor Place Mall was built and I came there as a teenager to shop. And now my husband and I, we come over to Douglas County pretty often to play at the West Pines Golf Course. And then we'll go and grab a bite to eat. And I live in Mableton, so I'm right over the Douglas County, Cobb County line. Um, but I've been following Douglas County for a number of years, and especially the transit in Douglas County. They're a leader for transit or transportation demand management. Um, when I was consulting previously, we did a lot of work with human resource or human services transportation, and Douglas County was one of those that we looked towards. Um, and you've recently integrated some fixed route service here in Douglas County. Um, I completed a transit feasibility study with the Aerotropolis looking at both how to tweak existing service, but also how to expand that service and how to get that funded. Um, I've also spent a lot of time over the last few years driving through Douglas County on State Route 6 uh, and all of the development, industrial development specifically, that's been going on on Thornton Road um, and what kind of impact that that has had with the freight and residential conflicts. That's a trend that we're seeing all over Metro Atlanta, but we're especially seeing it in Douglas County, South Fulton kind of areas. Um, that's something that I have been focused on and trying to find solutions on how to minimize those conflicts. And on the technology, Douglas County has been instrumental in their own success. They've committed the time, the money, 
um, and the investment into their infrastructure in order to attract new businesses such as Switch and Google. We are a local technology expert and we want to partner with Douglas County to continue to move forward and make Douglas County a leading county in Metro Atlanta on technology. Our approach, we're forward thinking. We want to think about what is coming in the future. Um, I, you know, we're not planning so much for the asphalt and the concrete. We're thinking about how is technology going to impact our communities and our transportation network. Uh, how is transit going to transform this region and how does Douglas County fit into that? But our ideas are not pie in the sky ideas. They're data driven, they're performance driven. Mm -hmm. And modern mobility has built the practice of project prioritization that is easy to understand and transparent. And then finally, we're also action oriented. My job at the Aerotropolis was to get projects done. And so as we were doing planning projects, we were looking for solutions that could be implemented even before the project was completed. And we did that a couple times on Virginia Avenue, uh, getting some signal upgrades on the signals along that corridor. So I, as a project manager, will be uh, managing the entirety of the project. And we've got a great project management team with key leaders, but really want to focus on the uh, QAQC, the quality assurance. Modern mobility was built on providing value to clients, not just checking boxes. And their minimum standard is award-winning quality. And they've so shown that in previous projects. Uh, we want to continue that trend. And we want to put our mark on Douglas County and partner with you um, in order to make sure that we exceed your expectations, that we fulfill the scope of services, uh, and that we provide a quality award-winning uh, product for Douglas County. All right, so for community engagement, we're gonna use a blend of both in-person and online digital kind of tactics. So, for the traditional in-person kind of strategies, we'll have the public meetings, we'll have flyers, participation at public events and festivals, hard copy surveys, and we really want to focus that in-person work in places where we know the data shows that there's less internet access, so we're really targeting that outreach, that more direct in-person, in places where we might miss the, um, the people who would be more digitally inclined. So on the, on the technology side, on the digital side of uh, the outreach, we'll have online survey, we'll have a project website, we'll have a social media presence that we're really going to try and tie in with existing Facebook groups, next door, so we can really expand that reach um, through existing channels. But we also want to try some innovative approaches that, um, that we've actually used in other studies. Uh, for example, doing a Facebook Live video stream of all the public meetings. That way, anyone can participate from anywhere. Um, just as if they were in the room. So they could even ask a question and the facilitator can relay it to the speaker such that it could be answered in real time. So the way it would work is a member of our team would smartphone or video stream the content of the meeting um, and it would be available live in person during the meeting and then it would live on afterwards. So if you missed it, want to go back and look at it or share it through other media, um, it's available afterwards which really also reaches more people. We also want to do some office hours online. So we'd set up a schedule in advance, identify the topics, and have maybe guest speakers or certain drill downs into key parts of the plan. And again, people could tune in and ask questions, have a dialogue in real time with Q&A. Again, that would live on afterwards. It would be on the website. It would be available um, via the internet to anyone. So. Um, those are a couple of innovative strategies we want to include. For the project prioritization framework, this is an example from, again, the Southern Fulton CCP that we're working on. And these eight criteria here um, are examples, but they're actually quite similar, we noticed, to, to the vision and goals um, and objectives of the previous Douglas CTP. So we'd start with that 
and really tailor it and get input from the project management team and the stakeholders on what those criteria should be and what the associated <coughs> metrics should be as far as measuring through quantitative and qualitative um, means measuring each of those criteria. So just one example is economic impacts. We looked at return on investment and other, um, other ways of measuring that criteria. For the inventory, this is um, an incomplete list of all the data sources. We've actually started looking into a lot of these already just in preparing for the proposal, pulling some of this data. Um, but the ones I really want to focus on are we recognize, and again, I've started compiling existing and previous plans that we'll want to really drill down on those recommendations and build off of those. In particular, the comprehensive land use plan, we know that it's very important to tie in with that. And I actually have a background in land use planning, um, so it's near and dear to my heart, but the close relationship between transportation and land use. Um, and then also, as Kelly and Kirsten have mentioned, ITS, intelligent transportation systems, and preparing for the future of automated and connected vehicles and other technological advances. Um, modern mobility is really at the forefront of that research and that knowledge, so um, we'll be at the cutting edge in that respect. So using the data from the inventory task, uh, we will start our needs assessment from both short term and the long term, and that will cover a wide variety of aspects from roadway capacity, congestion, freight, bottlenecks, safety, you know, trend bike and pedestrian analysis. We have already actually put out some data from ARC's regional model showing you know, what is the peak period level of service, what is the daily truck volumes of your major roadway facility within Douglas County. Uh, throughout the planning process, we will integrate and using visualization techniques. So those are some examples that for the Southern Ford and CTP we have recently uh, worked on. So you can see some snapshots and the highlights from demographics as well as the transportation elements for, for the county. And this can be used in the social media as well as when we reach out to public and the stakeholders. We will also develop a system performance dashboard for the Douglas County. So what this show is just a sample what it can look like. Uh, and of course, we will actually work with you and tailor it to reflect your needs as well as your feedbacks. Uh, but what this is going to show is what is the overall transportation benefits and impacts as well as the economic benefits for investing projects uh, from the CTP. Uh, so what makes our uh, team unique is we actually have capabilities for modeling, programming, as well as graphic design. So we can actually uh, extract information efficiently and then show that in a user-friendly manner. Uh, the other thing I want to actually briefly talk about is some of the online mapping tool we're currently working on for the Sun and Food and CTP. Um, so you don't need to have ArcGIS or some of the software, so this one actually compile all the projects from different data sources in a Google uh, online uh, platform. So we can actually show projects from different sources, whether it's the original RTP or SPLOS projects or projects that are identified from previous studies and they have that reflected here. And then what this can help is really promote uh, collaboration as well as information sharing. So it will streamline the development of the project and the screening process, um, which um, this tool can be also delivered to you guys as a legacy tool that can leave going beyond the study duration. I've highlighted over here some of our data sources and analysis tools we'll be using for the special Carter studies. But I want to spend most of my time talking about the needs, the challenges, and the potential solutions we see. Um, all of the corridors share some common needs and challenges. Improving safety is always going to be important, and also improving north-south and east-west connectivity. So all three of our corridors, Bright Star Road, uh, Bell Arp Road, and Chapel Hill Road, provide north-south uh, connectivity for I-20. And then um, Bright Star Road, Central Church Road, Beaumont Road, and the Lee Road Extension, those all form the inner arc. This is a major east-west corridor for Douglas County. It's been talked about a lot, it's been planned about a lot as a way to get as a parallel route to I-20. We also know that all three of these corridors are also gonna feed planned expressways for I-20. 
So those are going to be important to look at those. And that brings up one of the major challenges with all of these corridors. One of the major challenges is how do we balance commuter through traffic with local access for business, for retail, and for residential neighborhoods. So as we look at potential solutions for these corridors, we'll build off past planning efforts and past planning studies. We know a lot of work has been done thinking through how Lee Road would look and how that would work, uh, uh, function as part of that inner arc. Um, so we'll take advantage of that type of work. But we also know that sometimes we need a fresh set of eyes on things. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Ark Road and Chapel Hill Road, we know that there's a median along those roads close to where the businesses are along I-20. Um, and that works great for access management, but that's also produced some issues. Now we've concentrated a lot of turning movements at select key intersections. So that's overburdening some of those intersections. So we need to find ways to relieve some of those intersections. So there's uh, innovative intersection designs like continuous flow intersections and restricted, um, restricted crossing intersections that we can help implement it at some of those locations. Bright Star Road is underutilized right now. And we need to look at ways of how we could utilize Bright Star Road better so that it acts as a way to relieve traffic on Bill Arc Road. So there's been a lot of talk about an interchange on Bright Star Road, so we'll take a look at that for Bright Star Road and I-20. And so we'll take a look at both options as um, potentially an express lane only entrance to the exit point of Bright Star Road for those planned express lanes, or we could take a look at it also as a traditional general purpose interchange. For all of the corridors, um, incorporating multi-use trails is going to be important. We want to make sure as we look at these corridors that we're balancing competing needs, balancing the needs for improving mobility, but also making sure these corridors serve as neighborhood amenities and neighborhood assets. So the final task is taking a look at the fixed route transit service that was implemented and evaluating its performance so far. And so what we would like to do is to do a market demand through the activity-based model from ARC, understand where the demand is coming from and where it's going to. And then using a service planning software, such as Remix, which is shown here, you can compare that demand to the existing service and find where maybe you want to make some tweaks to the route, mm -hmm. but also you can identify where those expansion projects are. And we can look at those at, from an aspect of fitting them into the ATL plan and finding some additional funding. Um, we also want to look at other smart technologies for transit, such as microtransit or on-demand based transit, uh, looking at real-time location software, and we want to look at what is the customer experience for this transit. What amenities do you have at the bus stops? How are they getting to the bus stops? Are there sidewalks or are they walking through grass and dirt? So all of these tasks will lead us up to the recommendations, which is what we all want. Um, and we want to focus our recommendations on mobility and project readiness. So we want to look at your communication network. How do we build out a 5G network or a fiber network so you have the proper communication for these future technologies that are coming? What kind of connected vehicle applications do you want? Right, signal priority, preemption for your emergency vehicles, um, and what kind of mobility options are you looking for? Do you need more pedestrian access? Do you need more bus routes? Those are all things that we're going to be looking at. And finally, system preservation. Mm -hmm. What needs to be maintained? You know, paving and striping helps your technology perform at an optimal level. And the great news is, is that we have already compiled an inventory of all federal, state, regional, and local funding sources that are available for transportation projects. And we've already displayed them in a matrix and we know all of the criteria that's required for each one of those funding sources. We can put the Douglas County projects into it and use that to develop the constrained project list. Something that is going to be implementable, not just a plan with some potential funding sources. It'll be a strategic plan. We propose, we, we estimate an 18 month schedule with about four key milestones. We're gonna be having public and stakeholder engagement throughout that process. And then we're gonna have at least three opportunities to come and speak to the Board of Commissioners um, and, and other groups like this Transportation Committee. Um, but we'll finalize the details of the schedule during the kickoff 
and it will be outlined in the project management plan at the beginning of the project. So why us? Well, we have a head start. We will hit the ground running. You saw in our proposal, we've already put together a data needs list and a list of all the studies and plans, and we'll refine that um, as soon as we get started. You've already seen that we've extracted some of the travel demand data from the activity-based model. Uh, we've already done best practices review of different new and emerging technologies that are transferable here, so um, no sense reinventing the wheel there. We've got on-the-fly project prioritization tools that we've used for several different projects, and we have the funding strategy that Kirsten mentioned. Um, so lastly, you know, Kirsten, uh, we, when we, she's new to modern mobility, but she's not new to us. We've been working with her for eight years or so. She used to work with us at our prior firm. Um, and so we were really excited to bring her on. We know that she'll be able to deliver a uh, data-driven, innovative, yet implementable plan um, that is going to be communicated in a way that people can understand. Uh, again, we have unmatched LRTP or CTP and CTP experience. And one thing I just wanted to mention is that um, we're also working on bordering efforts here that will help with collaboration. We mentioned the Southern Fulton CTP. Arcadis is working on the Cobb CTP. And Jen actually worked on the Carol LRTP uh, a couple of years ago. And again, we are forward thinking. We hired Kirsten not only as a senior PM, but our Smart Cities Program Manager. And with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Chairman Jones, do you have a question at this time? Um, I just <coughs> should, we stand, just should we stand up here for questions? You don't have to. No? Oh, I do. Well, you <laughs> may stand up there. Whoever is going to be responding. <coughs> First of all, it was a very good presentation. and just wanted to just uh, emphasize that I was particularly impressed with the special quarter analysis. Uh, which captured most of the vessels uh, in Douglas County. My background in surgery, so I'm going to talk some surgery, talking about vessels and veins, and you picked up those main ones. And even you addressed the west side of the county. So tell me, with you uh, looking at that, at the special corridor, uh, corridor analysis, what are your plans by looking holistically at the entire county? Do you have any specific areas that we know that there's opportunity to expand or to address infrastructure that you capture anything along? analysis that you could expand on? Sure. Um, let me bring up that. Is that all right? Maybe yes. That or just so it would be good to speak to yeah. that. There it is. Just guess it. So I think um, one of the key things with all of these routes is, again, we know Bill Arp is a very congested corridor here through the main uh, uh, retail corridors along here. Um, so, as I mentioned before, trying to utilize Bright Star Road better to be able to use that as a way to relieve traffic. So that's going to be important. Um, I know with this, um, with the inner arc, you know, the idea is that we can widen these roads to four lanes. And so we need to really think about how these four lane roads are going to work within very established residential communities. And I think um, not just thinking about these as roads for cars, but thinking about how we can make these multimodal roads, how we can make these, making sure they have incorporated multi-use trails, making sure these can serve as amenities for the neighborhoods and not just the way that normal traffic to and from areas is gonna be very important. Um, you can see over here where this is um, a very weird skewed intersection here between mm -hmm. um, where basically Central Church and Bright Star and um, Bill Arp kind of meet together. So we need to look at maybe some innovative intersection designs here. Maybe think about how to bring this approach here for Kings Highway in there. This is gonna be, we're gonna make all of these roads, um, four lane roads over here, and have them all kind of intersect here. We gotta think about how we need to reconfigure some of that. So that's gonna be very important. Um, along Chapel Hill Road, mm -hmm. um, we are commercial and shopping up here north, um, and you're already at your four lane section over there, but then how are you gonna continue that four lane section down Chapel Hill? especially when you get, again, move into more residential neighborhoods. Are you considering widen, widening the road, or what are you considering? So things like that would be under consideration, and then, um, again, making sure that we incorporate sidewalks, um, mm -hmm. incorporate um, um, multi-use, but then we have to take a look at them holistically. Maybe it's not important there to get to be four lanes down here. Maybe we're sufficient with four lanes up here, and it can stay as two lanes. So we need to look at that as a yeah, and if I could just add something to that real quick. As part of the Southern Fulton CTP, we developed a corridor framework um, that not only looked at smart corridors, but looked at 
The um, different uses of the corridors, and you know, there's a lot of competing <coughs> interest in here as well, residential versus freight. And so um, being intentional about where we want the trucks to go and making those corridors more attractive to them. So one example might be freight signal priority during the off-peak hours to incentivize trucks um, to utilize those facilities late at night or really early in the morning and get them out of the, the peak conditions. But the idea is that as part of this for the whole county, we'll look at all the corridors and figure out, okay, which ones do we want to be, say, freight oriented? Which ones do we want to have livability? Um, where you have all the bike ped transit amenities, and some of them are going to be a combination and how do we make sure we accommodate both of those. So that's something that we, we look at as well. Okay. And my second question, and then I'll yield to our uh, chairman of this committee. Um, truck traffic, that's, that's huge in Georgia right now because we've closed a lot of the truck stops here in Georgia. What are the plans for Douglas County? Did you have an idea how you could, uh, what I would call, it, to, to, to rein the, the truck traffic in and make it specific to just one particular area? Because we have, our residents are complaining about truck traffic throughout all their neighborhoods, and we want to make sure we move that traffic out of the neighborhoods into the main roads. Uh, are, you meeting, are you looking at GPS, ways, means, all those things to determine how we could uh, make sure that those truckers understand which route they need to? Go on to drive on. Yes. Yeah, tell me a little bit about I'm, I'm lost with these trucks. I want to get them out of these neighborhoods. What are your plans? So, with the CTP, I think we take a similar approach to what we're doing with the freight cluster plan freight for cluster. the Air Aerotropolis Atlanta CID, which that's the exact intent is how do you manage the volumes of traffic knowing that truck volumes are probably going to continue to increase? Mm -hmm. How do you manage that with a competing residential component and wanting to maintain quality of life? Because on the industrial side, you've got a real economic advantage. You know, bringing distribution, technology, um, but that also brings jobs, which brings residents. And so that's a conflict, like you mentioned, that we're experiencing all over Metro Atlanta. For Douglas County, I think what we want to do is try to identify those areas where it's appropriate for trucks to be mm -hmm. and do some things that encourage them to take those routes rather than cutting through the local roads. So beyond freight priority, we can also make it conducive for them because their trucks are easier to get in and out. You know, we can look at the radii at intersections so they have better turning movements. It's easier for them to move through that area. Um, we can look at other technology that might might be out there that, that other communities are using. We've done the best practices, and the freight priority seems to be one that is gaining a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to look at maybe some other technologies that could be out there to alleviate some of those conflicts. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I yield to our chairman. Chairman Robin. Yeah. Right, no problem. Again, welcome. Thank you all. And uh, I appreciate the name of your firm. Um, it, 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 yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, and, and, and so I appreciate your um, intellectual prowess. I, I heard you. We put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I heard you. But to, to, to that point, um, you, you, your leverage of technology is important. And I, I appreciate your, it, it, it helps in framing the issues. It did matter. I, I appreciate that. I just want to acknowledge that. Um, now, take you framed it for us. You, you've got some great data, great metrics, no doubt about it. Now, mm -hmm. talk to me about now, and I'm consistent with everybody, so I'm, I'm pretty open about because I'm always about funding. Mm -hmm. right? I'm also trying to uh, finance it, uh, and so this is important, which is at the end of the day, you've got these plans, you've identified these metrics and you know, the weaknesses and levels and all that, but at the end of the day, outside the plan, there has to be an underlying financial plan. Mm -hmm. Right, that, that, that supports that plan. Mm -hmm. um, my, my question is, um, and we're, we're all about leveraging our local dollars on the food chain. I appreciate you guys have this database of all the different things. That's great to know, but how will that benefit us? Is that a fair question? I'm consistent. How, how will you help us meet our local dollars? Ten dollars need one dollar. How do you help us leverage our dollar to meet this broader need based on what you said you can do? It's all the question. There's no good or right, bad answer. 
Sure. Um, well, I'm glad that you asked it, and it's something that I had to focus on every single day working at the CID is how do we leverage our little $2 million a year budget and try to come up with a $200 million capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to look at all of your options and it's probably going to take a combination. So in leveraging those dollars, we want to look at, okay, what is the funding source? Let's, let's take an intersection project. Please look. Sure. Okay, so an operation intersection project, um, in the grand scheme of things, not terribly expensive. Uh, so what kind of opportunities are there? You want to get it done quickly, so maybe we don't go with federal dollars. Maybe we look to more towards state dollars. Um, is there an opportunity for the county to move it through the design process with your dollars and then use the dollars that you've already expended to leverage state or regional dollars. And one of the funding programs that I think of is the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank. Mm -hmm. um, they do both grants and loans. Uh, they're looking for projects that are close to being shovel ready. Um, and so if you can put your money into the design work, they will use that as your match. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to come up with additional dollars for the construction. So those are the kind of things we want to look at for every single project, and we want to identify those that are project, the project readiness, the, the low-hanging fruit where we can get some early wins. Mm -hmm. For uh, the Virginia Avenue project that I worked on with mobility, uh, Modern Mobility Partners, we discovered that we needed to upgrade signals, and we talked to GDOT, and we found out that they, had, they actually did that for us for free, and it was not on a state route. They have licenses, they've got money, and they're willing to spend it, but they don't know where until the locals tell them what the needs are. And so that is an example of an opportunity where you can leverage some other types of money for, for technology. Okay, that's a good, good response. And so I'm going to my second and last question, and again, you should give a statement before I get there, which is okay, taking the, the this, this, and we talked about Lee Road, which connects three commission districts, right, that east-west corridor for us. And, um, but it, we're sensitive as district commissioners of, of how we travel, but then we're also, you know, always talk about Douglas County is not Pluto. We're part of the bigger metro area, right? And even though we're off the beaten path, and we're, we're, we're progressing to a point where we're, we're now on the scene. So how, whereas the eastern part of the county looks more like Cobb and Bolton, high density, to west as a different culture area, I mean, character area, it is what? More like Pauline and Carroll. My question then becomes, how will you, um, how, how do we approach two distinguishedly different areas? I mean, how is that reflected in our plan? Even though we might be progressive, how, how is that reflected in, in this whole regional thing? How do you get there? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you, you hit it that you've got different character areas. Mm -hmm. And those character areas have different goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. They have different needs. They have different desires. I would imagine that people that live in Western Douglas don't want to live in an urbanized area. They would prefer to try to keep it rural because they like to have the land and the space and less traffic. And so I think you have to look at those as, as their character areas, understand what the characteristics are, what the goals and objectives are, and plan based on those. You can still fit that into a regional plan. I mean, I think, you know, Douglas County is perfectly situated to explode over the next decade. You, you are in an accessible area. You have gained momentum in bringing economic development. You see more people moving out here. And I-20 is not as congested as some of the other interstates, mm -hmm. although I know we all have our interstate woes. Um, but I think that you can still attract and be a part of the regional plan by connecting the right areas of the county to the region. And, and, and to that point, that's why I was just, I wasn't looking for a right or wrong answer, but just acknowledge with the fact that there, there, ha there has to be knowledge that we're, we're not in isolation, we're not on an island by ourselves. Which brings me to the last point, you use technology you know, as an emphasis, that's your, that's your unique selling point, that, that's your that's how you go to market, okay? Now, and I get high, high tech, 
when you talk about uh, engaging our citizens, how do you avoid, uh, how do you keep it clean where, to your point, out west may want one thing. I mean, how will you manage citizens who try to influence um, the, the process and stuff? And it, it's a fair question, but I'm just curious, how do you handle it? What's your experience on dealing with, everybody don't want to talk about transit. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't want to, you know, that's a key part of this, and I'm glad that you guys actually acknowledged it. Talk to us, and then 5G and all those, or 5G or G5, whatever, 5G, 5G. thank you, 5G. How will you handle, I mean, it's a one-off thing, but it's, it's one of those, it, it, it matters to me. How will you handle that? But Douglas is Douglas. Uh, so I'm chomping at the bit here because, okay. um, I'm sorry, I can't there contain you. myself because I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think David can attest on this other full CTP. We're dealing with eight jurisdictions. Yep. Um, you've got the Tri-Cities area with College Park and East Point and all that, and then Chat Hills. And they got completely different values of what they want. Chat Hill does not want anything, maybe a multi-use trail, and that's it. Leave them alone. Let them have enough money to preserve their roads. Whereas other areas want transit and all kinds of stuff. And so, or they want their own DDI. So, mm -hmm. you know, so everybody, so they got different values. One of the tools that we used through the engagement process was we used a Mentimeter digital polling tool that we used not only in the public meetings, but also online that was distributed that we ended up getting, I think it was like 1,130 responses. Um, and what we did is as part of the project prioritization framework development is we had them weigh in on, literally, we had them rank order in their importance one to eight um, of those eight different categories for how they wanted to prioritize projects. What did they place the most value on? And we made sure that they also told us what city they lived in, okay? So we were able to come up with different prioritization schemes or waiting scenarios for different di cities. So with that said, here, a similar effort could be done where we just make sure that we know what part of the county, <coughs> so in the western parts of the county, they may have different values and want different types of projects than other areas of the county. That's so good. Similar. You did good. We're fine. I want to. Okay. Yeah. Miguel? Yes, uh, real quick. Uh, if, if, well, we have several of those, but we have a corridor, let's say, that is fairly well congested, uh, maxed out in terms of capacity. Um, but you want to be able to get people off of I-20 and get them to where they live. How would you approach dealing with a corridor like that to get them from where, from I-20 basically to where they live? Okay. okay. What, what kinds of uh, techniques? Oh, what types of projects? And well, what approach would you use? How, how would you uh, get them the how would you address the mobility shortcomings of a corridor like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to let Jen or Otto. Sure. So um, if we're constrained on the corridor itself, so we don't have room to do anything on this corridor itself, um, we have to look at our parallel corridors. Are there parallel corridors that can help relieve things? Um, again. I, Keeps on coming up, the Bright Star and Bill Arp, you know, that keeps on coming up. Um, so we need to look at those. Um, and we have to take a look at all the different modes and how they can help work together with this. Mm -hmm. So, um, special Carter studies, I know that's something uh, to focus on, but um, we also have to look at how transit plays into that and how um, other ways can help to, if we're maxed out on Carter and, and we've made a decision, we don't want to widen our roads anymore because we don't think that's right for either businesses or, or because we don't want to encourage more more car traffic, then we have to take a look at those other modes, and then we have to take a look and see if we can uh, develop those parallel routes. And I, and I think that's one of the important things when you guys all identify those special corridors, um, you know, you can really see how all those corridors can work together to help solve, solve an issue. And not just that signal synchronization, it's another yeah. one, just optimizing mm -hmm. the signals. Yeah, I was thinking about the wellness things that we can also look into is really what is the cost of your congestion. So there's capacity related congestion. There's also like operation bottleneck congestions. Mm -hmm. So we, I think we, we talked about a lot of data inventory. It really is really understand what is the reason of causing those congestions. Some of the times it's the freight when we talk about it. Sometimes it can be safety related because 
of the accidents, and then couldn't, it might not be just the, just the capacity. So we need to look at you know peak period of congestion. Is the congestion daily for how many hours? And then if it is really a capacity related for many hours during the day, then you know we look at the power layer facilities, also connection with other facilities. So there are a lot of things. There is a toolbox basically is, you know, if you have identified this cause, those are the, your solutions. So I think what we need to do is really go back to the car, to the reason, and then mm -hmm. with that reason, we can actually find the reflecting toolbox to address those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kelly, thank you so much for your team being here today. Thank you. Uh, I think we've uh, 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 had a great presentation from you guys. And we appreciate the time that you spent with us. Thank you. And Thank you. Hopefully, you'll hear, hear from us in the future. Yeah. Well, um, what is the timing on notification Soon. anyway? Soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're going to get. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Great, Thank you. great job. Great job. Okay. Great job. Yeah. Very good. speak from the podium we're uh, uh, videoing this presentation so we just need you to be close to the podium or at the podium is what I've been told oh and you know if you can sit at the table please make yourself as comfortable as you can except you here uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was right here Did you guys, is that theirs? It is. Okay, yes, that's how it was. Okay. Okay. I got no, no, no. Uh, We appreciate you guys being here today. Uh, this is the uh, Douglas County Transportation Committee and others. Uh, we would like for you guys to present to us your, uh, your verbal presentation of your comprehensive plan. Uh, Grady, if you will introduce uh, who you have with you today and then start with the presentation. Well, we're happy to be here, and I'll uh, start. I'm Grady Smith, the uh, principal in charge of the VHB. Hi, I'm Allison Stewart Harris. I'm a planner at VHB. Fabrizio Pons, I'll be the project manager for the CTP. Richard Fangman with Pond, I'm the deputy project manager. I'm Tori Hill, I'm with the collaborative firm. Hey, I'm Matt Thompson with VHB, an engineer. <coughs> well, we'll jump right in. I did bring copies of the presentation for folks um, who'd like to have that. Again, yes. I'm Grady Smith with a VHB, the principal in charge. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, this opportunity has been on our radar for quite a while. Uh, we spent some time out in the community talking with folks, uh, meeting with individuals, uh, getting well grounded uh, and ready uh, to support uh, Douglas County in this very, very important effort. Um, a lot of work has been done over the years. We want to maximize that. Uh, I have the honor of uh, introducing the team. We have a, a really strong uh, experienced team of folks uh, that we bring forth uh, for your consideration. Uh, today we want to kind of talk about a few items. Um, first of all, our commitment uh, as a team, but more importantly, 
Uh, the project manager is very key to the success of any project. Uh, so our, our project manager will personally give his commitment uh, to this project. Uh, secondly, we want to demonstrate our understanding of the mobility concerns and opportunities as well uh, in the Doug Douglas County area. Uh, our team has had an opportunity to work on previous uh, transportation projects in Douglas County. Uh, both the Connect Douglas work that's going on now, but also uh, we were involved in the predecessor work to that, uh, the uh, Douglas County Mobility uh, Transportation Mobility Study that was done a few years back that led to the development of the routes uh, that are out there now. Um, we really want to focus in on the right ideas and how do we uncover those. We'll talk some more about that. Uh, the right approach and then making sure that at the end of the day what we bring forth are solutions that we can actually implement, pay for, uh, and turn dirt. Uh, at the end of the day, we know we're the right team. Uh, we hope you agree with us. On um, the first part of the CTP process in this update, we believe needs to start with visioning. Uh, and sort of uh, some tenets that we think are very important in Douglas County as it relates to creating a vision, working with uh, the leadership here, but also the community is first of all economic development. The county is growing, it's becoming very diverse uh, as that growth has happened. Uh, so we think leveraging all the great work that's been done on the economic development side and aligning our transportation investments um, is going to be important. You'll hear more about that in our presentation. There's a lot going on around the region. Um, the Atlanta Regional Commission is updating their plan, uh, but there's transit activity going on with the ATL. Uh, but there's also managed lanes that are being uh, built uh, through the uh, GDOT uh, program. Uh, some planning for expansions of those managed lanes here in Douglas County in the future by GDOT. So we think uh, making sure that we understand what's going on around the region and what's going on in our uh, neighboring counties is going to be very important. We know you have a tight budget, for example, next year. So state of good repair. It's going to be very key uh, pavement management. Uh, we think working with uh, working with your program manager, uh, we can help refine uh, that process. Equity, safety, and future-proofing, making sure that we prepare for the future. Uh, transportation technologies are coming online all the time. Um, autonomous vehicles, connected vehicles, battery technology, a lot is happening in the transportation space. We want to make sure that your transportation plan and its vision uh, recognizes that. With all of that, it needs to be grounded in some solid goals and performance measures that we'll work to develop with, uh, with the leadership and the community. Uh, make sure that our process is tailored to local needs is a very, very uh, big piece that we're very proud of. We've had the opportunity to work on many CTPs around the region, um, and every single one of them are different. Uh, we've worked on smaller ones in counties like Bartow that Fabricio is working in now, but also larger plans such as the city of Atlanta. Each one of them are quite different in how we approach them. Priorities and local needs are all different. In fact, uh, in the last Georgia Engineering Magazine, uh, the City of Atlanta CTP in which VHB led was highlighted, and uh, we'd love to share that with you if you'd love to take a look at it. Um, and then finally, we know it's going to be important to leverage federal funds, state funds in the best way we can, but also bring private investment to the table. Everything that we do will be grounded in quality, both in terms of deliverables and our rec recommendations and our technical analysis. Um, I have the honor of uh, introducing Fabricio Ponce. We've worked for quite a, quite a while together across the southeast, not just here in the Atlanta region, but also in Florida and, um, and Tampa Bay area. But Fabricio brings quite a background and experience base that we think is going to be very important uh, here for Douglas County. Uh, Fabricio is leading uh, the Bartow County work. Uh, that's finishing up now, a very similar process to uh, what we'll be undertaking here with the county. He also was involved in helping me in the cab. Uh, we developed a, a, a transportation focused on transit plan for them. Uh, they will likely be going out to referendum with a series of projects next year. Fabricio was involved in uh, helping me uh, uh, stay, <laughs> stay focused uh, and out of trouble. Uh, and then finally, uh, Fabricio was also involved in the City of Atlanta plan. Uh, a big part of the process there that was unique there was uh, we didn't use the fancy travel demand models. Uh, so we tailored a modeling platform in the case of that CTP and Fabricio was sort of our sounding board to make sure that that model made sense. Um, he will be your single point of contact. Um, if, uh, if there's any issues though, I'll be there to yank him back in 
in line. Um, he'll be leading this 12 to 15 month schedule uh, and again leading this exciting team. So um, I'll turn it over to Fabricio and uh, he'll take us through the presentation. Thank you, Brady. When we, we assembled this team, we, we did it thinking specifically about the needs of, of, of this CTP. Uh, we assemble a team that has significant, as Grady mentioned, significant experience not only in the, in the uh, uh, metropolitan area but also more importantly in, in working in, in Douglas County. Uh, in addition to that, and, and that experience gives us basically a, an understanding of the challenges and also how to navigate through, the, through those challenges. In addition to that, uh, we know that you just uh, amended your, the procurement section of the Code of Ordinances to incorporate DB, a DBE a process. Before that, we had the collaborative firm uh, already as part of the team. They are a minority-owned firm, and also a firm that has significant experience working here in, in, in Douglas County. Uh, so, and, and we, they are not only a minority firm, but we have a long-lasting working relationship with them, so this would not be the first time that, that we were working on a project with them. In addition to that, you have already seen our org chart, but something that I wanted to highlight is uh, we specifically identify uh, Hill Hodges as our QAQC person. We, we think that, that the QAQC is extremely important. And she's not only going to lead the QAQC process for this project, but she also leads the QAQC process for DHB for the Southeast region. So she's someone that, that's intimately familiar with what needs to be done here. So this understanding and, uh, of, of Douglas County allow us to develop an approach that basically going to leverage on that on that local knowledge. But what's important is that also what that allowed us to do is to develop an approach that's specifically <coughs> tailored for for Douglas County. Uh, we this approach, of course, covers all the basic requirements that the CDP should cover. So all those boxes are going to be checked. But I think what what's different and what set our, our approach apart is that we are going to use transportation investments strategically to basically incentivize and, and direct economic development. Uh, so the first step of the process is what we, we like to call uh, uncovering the right ideas. So we know that population and employment trends are driving more toward multimodal needs. We also know that whether we like it or not, congestion is going to get worse over time. That's just how things are. So on, uh, on the opposite side, transit ridership over time, it's definitely going to increase. That's, that's the direction we as a region, we, we're moving toward. Uh, there's a great, we are only a few miles away from the busiest airport in the world. That's a great opportunity that we need to take advantage of and somehow leverage and incorporate as part of, of, of this CDP. We know that local funding, it's always a challenge. As Grady mentioned, we, we know that your budget for next year is probably as tight as it has ever been. So how do we leverage those funds and how do we make the most out of it so we can get state and federal funds to, to, to help us with, with our needs? And as I mentioned, transportation. Use transportation as a key driver for, for economic development. We, we know that how, how important that is for, for you as a county. So with that, Alison. Great. Well, good afternoon. You know, I'm not a transportation planner. I'm more of a community development and land use planner. And when I took a look at your economic development strategy, I was really impressed. And one thing I really love about what y'all had in there is this, uh, this principle of investing with intent. And I think that is so perfect for your CTP update as well. Specifically, that you know, every every recommendation, every project that you all include in your CTP should really be hitting on multiple levels. It's not just a transportation investment; it's an economic development investment too. So, as we're going through these recommendations, you know, how can we best be uh, supporting your business and economic development goals? How can we help bring jobs here to Douglas County? On the other end, how can we also be supporting the new residential growth that's coming in balance with supporting your existing neighborhoods as well? Now, y'all have been doing a lot of really great planning in recent years, and part of the CTP process is taking a look at those visions and those recommendations and making sure that we have the transportation projects in place that support all of those. 
But we think the CTP is also an opportunity to take things a little bit further. So if you take a look at your, uh, your target industry report that you all did, these were the three industry clusters that were identified where Douglas County has a competitive advantage. And you know, each of these clusters, they all have transportation needs and desires. So you know, specifically when we're looking at your industrial areas, any sort of project, any recommendation that we're looking at in those areas really needs to be considering all these. Every transportation project is an opportunity to say, hey, you know, is there something that we can do that helps roll out the welcome mat to attract some of these businesses and these jobs to Douglas? Now, in our economy today, it's not just about jobs and business, it's also about quality of life. Um, one thing that's really exciting about your CTP is its timing. Um, ARC and the Trust for Public Land are leading a really huge initiative right now to plan the Chattahoochee Greenway, which is a 100-mile greenway trail from Buford Dam all the way down to, to Chattahoochee Bend State Park. And y'all are right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. What's great is that they're just beginning their process. The alignment has not been figured out. So if this is something that y'all want to be a big part of and lead, you have this great opportunity through your CTP to say, hey, you know what, we want this on the Douglas side. We got a line item in our CTP. We're ready. Bring it here. One of the best parts about all this though is that, you know, this is not this is not pie in the sky stuff. I mean, y'all have the demographics here to attract this investment and support it. You know, you have a young population that's educated, that's ready to work. Your median income, y'all are right in the mix with everybody else. And we see the CTP as really a really great opportunity to say, hey, you know what, we're making the transportation investments to support our vision for community growth. And throughout this process, we're going to be checking in with the community to make sure that whatever we are talking about and proposing continues to be in alignment with what that vision is. I'm going to hand it over to Tori to talk a little bit more about what that process looks like. I'm with a collaborative firm, and one of the most exciting parts to us about being a part of this team is we're already in Douglas County. We, are, we have been working here in Douglas County for the past few years, uh, specifically in working with the Connect Douglas program. And we recognize that um, we know Douglas County. We respect that the citizens that are part of your cities and the overall county uh, want to be a part of the decision-making process. And we have developed a, a toolbox of outreach options that allow us to bring them into the process. And what we envision as we move forward is just expanding on that and being able to tailor a, a outreach program that will allow them to speak specifically to the uh, CTP and have a voice in what's being planned for their area. Again, when I say we are proud to be a part of the county, we are extremely proud, as you know, of the uh, uh, fixed route bus service that kicked off in June. We are uh, right now in the midst of a marketing program for that, uh, which is a part of our overall outreach program for the county. And what we hope to do, or prepare to do as a part of our outreach efforts, is build on that ex existing program uh, so that we can work with you as you are looking at what's operational right now, what needs are being met, what needs to be expanded on, and uh, which will include um, reaching out to your large business partner, uh, large business partners, and servicing their employees, and looking at who's coming in and out of the county. And we have, as I said, are just excited to be able to build on the ex existing outreach program that we have, so that we can meet the needs of the plan that we are we are talking about today. So we we talked about this uncover this first step in the process, the uncovering the need. <coughs> so now, how are we going to actually do the project? What's what's the the, the approach to, to really get it done? So well, the first thing that I want to mention is, is we already have an extensive GIS database with significant amount of, of data for, for the county. We are also very familiar with the travel characteristics in the county. We are, as, as Grady mentioned, we, we were part of developing the initial routes for the transit study. Our, our partner in, in this project, the collaborative firm, is, is already working on Connect Douglas. It's also conducting a significant amount of public involvement. So with that, at the end of the day, what that means is that we have a head start. We, we already have that. So why is that important? Well, it's important because by having a head start, it's, it's going to allow us to spend more time on, on other basically more time and resources on other portions of the plan. And 
Richard, who's going to be my, my, my deputy project manager, is going to talk about how, how we're going to work on that. Okay, yeah, great. Thanks, Fabricio. And so one of the things that, uh, you know, building on what Fabricio, Fabricio said, we're really excited about, uh, you know, all the things that we know about the county and how we can take those to the kind of the next level. I've got a history of working on projects in the county that goes back about 20 years. So back about 1998, when our Place Mall was coming online, I got to work on some of the initial traffic studies from the the fallback that happened after some of the traffic was there, and I know didn't get to do it as deeply as David did, who, who, who led some of the Arbor Place Mall uh, work back then, but did um, work also on the State Route 92 corridor. And so I've seen some, several of the iterations of that corridor as it, as it developed and, and worked on the traffic uh, that was associated with that. Also, a little more recently, I uh, worked on the, the Bright Star Road interchange, which was a joint county and city project. And a lot of times the county and the city before them weren't working together as much, and they were a lot in that project. And I think that, that, um, that that's given me a lot of, over time, an understanding of how the traffic flows are moving in around that really critical and key area for the county as a crossroads to a lot of east-west and north-south connectivity. Right now, I'm leading the Villa Rica Transportation Master Plan, so working with that city and being able to bring that uh, information from, from that area into the county. We're also leading the, we're working on the Lee Road uh, extension design project with the county, so we're understanding how that flow is working down in that area. So I feel like personally I bring a lot to the table as far as that, uh, that knowledge over time. And one of the things we want to do is kind of build on your previous CTP. It's been about 10 years since you've done that CTP uh, project before. So, uh, but there's a, there's a lot of things that are still pertinent in that that we want to make sure get reflected here. Particularly some of those things are that east-west travel across the county, making sure that we continue to expand and, and, and work that into the into the recommendations and, and get that as a viable system. Also strengthening uh, connections to surrounding communities, uh, particularly connecting up to Cobb County where there's a lot of activity, uh, you know, in, you know, in, in interaction between uh, Douglas County and Cobb County into the northeast uh, part of the county. And also as, as uh, South Fulton County is growing and expanding even more, how do we strengthen those connections from the southeast portion of your county down into South Fulton County is going to be an important part of this plan and then providing those multiple travel modes within the county. We'll talk a little more in detail about that and the importance of that um, in a minute. Um, one of the things we do first off is understanding the travel patterns. And this is a very basic map for tra travel patterns, about as basic as it gets. But this is stuff that comes from the census, uh, looking at how many people are commuting in to Douglas County, how many people are commuting, who, who live in Douglas County or commuting out for work, and how many jobs there are, and, and people who are staying within the county. Now that number is always a little low. There's probably more than 8,000 people I know that are living and working within the county. But understanding that as a basis, but but then really what we'll be doing is looking at your travel man model and how that can can reflect, uh, uh, you know, especially down to the corridor level. We'll talk a little bit about the details of that. But um, we've got a lot of experience, and, and and VHB has worked closely with that model with the transit components of the, of the connection <coughs> the Douglas project. And so what we'll be doing is looking at your key corridors, looking, do we need to refine that model a little bit? Do we need to make some enhancements so that we can reflect traffic in that better? And then one of the things that we're really good at is looking at how we translate that data into to data that's applicable to use and analyze on the corridors. I'll, I'll, I'll go into a little more detail about that here in a minute. But I do want to talk also about multi, one of the key aspects being the multimodal assessments of, uh, within the county. So, um, you know, we're going to be looking definitely what roads we need to widen. How do we need to make new connections? What do we need to do with intersections? But, but equally important is how do we make sure that we look at these alternative uh, travel modes? Now that you're starting with your transit system in the county, it's fun to, to, to work with CMAC funding for about three years. But we need to look at, well, how does that expand in the future? How do we really take uh, and, 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 and run with that? And how does that work in the context of this plan that goes all the way out to year 2050? And so we'll be looking at that <coughs> aspect. Another thing then that becomes vitally important is how we connect the active modes of transportation, walking and biking, not just within communities, but to provide better access to that transit and make it more of a viable connection. We've got a lot of experience doing that. We've, I've done worked on several biking pedestrian plans, so I know how, uh, how it can come together uh, from, from the aspect of looking at that mode alone and how that mode is integrated. Um, also, freight mobility is really important. Another study that I've worked on uh, with, with you all and with, with other, uh, with, with you all, GDOT and Cobb County, is the um, State Route 6 uh, corridor study, and looking at the freight there and how that, we've done short-term improvements out there, and then we'll be moving to doing those longer-term improvements of how we ultimately improve that corridor. So vital to freight. I think similar look of freight needs to be done to other corridors within the county to really make sure when we're looking at year 2050, how we can keep that to be, to be viable. 
Also, smart corridors, that's another thing that's really important. How do we leverage technology as far as traffic signals and, and, and even smart shuttles, things like that that can work into the future. We're working right now in Woodstock on a smart corridors plan that's focused on their downtown area, so it has a lot to do with walkability and access to potential transit. Executing the right approach through active transportation, though, has to do a lot with what we do um, you know, here looking at your stuff locally, but also funding those active transportation modes is a challenge sometimes, and a lot of that burden often falls on local governments to do. What we want to do is look at how do we leverage funds that might be available through the Atlanta Regional Commission, through uh, you know, GDOT and federal sources. And so one of the ways we want to do that is, is by really linking what we're doing to the, the walk, bike, and thrive plan that ARC has done. So they've, they've developed a framework that looks at what we look at regionally and through traffic sheds, but then also how does that relate down to 20-minute walkable areas and walking and biking to, to, to transit. And so um, by, by looking at how we can align the things that we do in our prioritization plan to what's going on with that walk, bike, and thrive and building on that network. This is just a, a framework network that's at a, at a high level, but utilizing those uh, things to kind of expand that plan uh, for your local needs will be a key part of this. Another thing is managing the level of analysis. So we can look at the travel demand model all we want. That's going to give us one level of analysis. That gives you, you know, uh, uh, things at, uh, at, at sort of a, a county level and sub-county level. But what we really want to do is be able to drill down the corridors. And your scope of work has got specific corridors that you want us to analyze. We're very <coughs> good at doing that. We've, we, uh, again, we're finding that travel demand model by, by, by looking at how we can, uh, you know, combine some of the traffic analysis zones doing other work with that and also pulling that data out, combining it with big data sources that we can get and we can use through partnerships with, with, that you have with ARC so that we can have good data going into our corridors. Um, we've done a lot of work on corridor studies themselves as a team and, and, and I have individually and in looking at um, the, the you know corridors like State Route 74, uh, which we just did down in the southeast of Atlanta, we looked at alternative intersections through that corridor. What can we do with um, our cuts? And, Median U turns and non -tradition, other non traditional improvements. Those have a lot of bearing on trying to enhance your safety while also providing better operations at lower cost. Um, roundabouts is another thing that we really need to look closely at in the county. You've got a lot of the county that's still developing, and as that develops out, one of the tools that's really good in the toolbox is looking at what we can do with roundabouts. We save you on uh, cost for, uh, you don't have to have a, uh, maintenance of of your traffic signals into the future. They also help you retain that residential character in areas that you don't want to just turn into a, a major crossroads with traffic signals. So again, trying to, to combine what we're doing with the technical aspects with what relates to the community and to the things that you're trying to build here. Yeah. One more thing then that all leads down to is the end is that project prioritization. How do we get these projects? So we, we work on this, we come up with, with many projects, how are we going to get those to where you can decide which ones are the most important and which ones can be set up for funding? And so really, when we do that, the idea there is not for us to, to dictate projects, but to provide a menu of, of options and a menu of things that we then work, uh, work with you on to inform the process, not to, not to be um, something that prescribes it. And so there's a lot of characteristics that go into that performance uh, you know, uh, measurement. Um, and we want to look at how this relates to public health, how it relates to safety resiliency in the environment, but also how it's moving traffic. And that's the things I get excited about, how much traffic can be moving. But how, but how can we keep people safe? And so um, we want to make sure that this will be looking at a lot of those options, but also how this relates to the ARC's um, performance metrics is really important. And VHP's got a lot of experience in looking at how those things hook together as we develop those prioritization schemes. Because again, what we want to do is line this up so that we can get money. The last thing I'd say about prioritization is we do want to look at that short range prioritization uh, as well, knowing that you'll be having other spots coming up. We want to make sure that we, as we go through this plan, we were going to define those times early on where we need to get those spots lists together for you. So you've got things that will plug right into there from a short range perspective. So we talked about uncovering the right ideas. We talked about the approach. But you know what? At the end of the day, we need to have implementable projects. That's really the key. And what do we mean by implementable? Projects that, number one, from an engineering, an engineering perspective, we can build them, we can put them on the ground, but also that we know how we're going to pay for them. Uh, can, can we afford them and it, how, where, the, where those funds are going to come from? So Matt is going to talk a little bit about that.
I'll be quick, last person. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm a design engineer by trade. I'm not a planner. I'm kind of like an Alice in the spot. Um, Except he has math skills. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we've done some design work for the county. Uh, we actually worked on the Maximum Road Project. We were under contract. We started out with Randy and Randy, and we finished that up with Miguel, which is currently left. Uh, part of what we want to do is our, our kind of design group can help that the project right now doesn't go into CTP. We can make sure that we're looking at good project, project descriptions, logical termini, things like that, evaluating the environmental impacts, making sure that we have really good quality estimates that are in those in the CTP. Because when you take that to the next step, you want to be sure as you start chasing funding, your cost is right. When you start allocating funding, you want the cost to be correct. Um, and part of that next step is you know helping you guys identify where that funding should come from. Uh, as Fabricio noted, y'all are real tight on your local funding. So we want to make sure we're focusing the local SWAS funds on smaller projects and giving the bank for the buck on those and helping you identify which projects are worthwhile to chase federal funding or state funding. And the big difference there, I'm sure a lot of y'all know, when you're chasing federal funding, a lot of roads to go through, a lot of need for documentation process. If you can identify ones where the, you need more money for state funding, you really get a lot of, rid of a lot of that stuff. And, and part of that kind of cost estimating and reviewing the environmental impacts, we can help in the CT plan, CTP identify which ones are probably more ben beneficial to chase the state funding. Uh, if you've got a lot of history, that's definitely where you want to look in that route. At the same time, we want to look at future opportunities, TIDs, potential CIDs, um, the managed lanes that are going all around the top end now. They're planned to come out I-20 on both directions at some point, and as those are they find funding for those, you want to be noted and be there to coordinate with GDOT. What can we do? What can we build? How can we be part of this and use that funding as well? Uh, and as you look at newer projects in the CTP, the one thing we didn't want to lose focus on is the project you need to maintain. Uh, we do know that you guys are currently going through a pavement prioritization, working with Moreland on a pavement management plan. We understand that's very important. Um, you can see here, I'll, I'll go through this a little bit, but part of that, that gives us an opportunity to work with Moreland and you guys to identify what kind of maintenance projects may need to go in the CTP and be prioritized there. Um, you can see as, as the lifespan over time goes with the pavement and you guys are finding this out, it hits a point and it drops off significantly and the cost of bringing that pavement up to the quality it was in the beginning it is quite expensive and starts jumping up at the same time it starts falling off. So it definitely gives us an opportunity to work with more and work with you guys to get that in the CTP now and start looking at, hey, where do we need to spend that money to maintain pavement? Where do we need to spend that money for newer projects? As you guys learn better working prior to that. So to wrap up, why, why the DHB team? It, of course, you have the commitment of our team, but more important than that, you have my personal commitment. This project is going to be my number one priority. It, it's, it goes beyond the team, goes beyond BHB. It's, it's me. It's personally. I, I made that commitment. Also, at, hopefully through the presentation, you've seen that we have a thorough understanding of, of, of Douglas County, of your challenges, the challenges that we're facing, and, and how we can work together to basically overcome those, those challenges. It, we developed this process of, of the, the right ideas, the right approach, but again, at the end of the day is how do we identify those implementable solutions that can be built and that we can basically afford, that we can pay, we can fund. And how we can use those solutions to really incentivize and direct economic development to the areas where we want to focus on. And at the end of the day, we're, we're extremely excited about this project. We are looking forward to partner with you and, and we're ready, we're ready to start working on it. So with that, we would like to we have five minutes for questions, so we'll first go with Chairman <coughs> Jones to see if she has anything. Okay, thank you so much. First of all, for a very great presentation. Just had one, I was just looking for the detail, and it just says the one, the topic, I believe it was, I don't know, yes. you mentioned investment intent, whether to complete, but I kind of answered my own question once I started. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the median household incomes uh, was based on 
the year yes. 2013, mm -hmm. because our latest report for Moody is that instead of 55,000, it's 67,000. Yes. So we're really excited. Yes. 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 I <laughs> really want to say I'm a downgrade. Yes. So yes. thank you so much. And then I have one last question. Sure. And then I'm done. I try to. Uh, your topic is on, well, I don't know, this doesn't have a page number, executing the right approach project. Yeah. The project organization. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at uh, your plans for leveraging our funding sources, and I believe you just you did, have a, you did just review that with us, with the T SPLOS and SPLOS and other uh, avenues, SIDS and uh, things of that sort, TADS. Um, for Douglas County, if, if you have to look at, 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 at our county specifically, um, and I've been hearing a lot of talk about that Bright Star area. In your mind, do you think there's an opportunity for an access to the 20 freeway to allow the traffic to dump down onto the 20 freeway or to an access point from uh, Bright Star? Is there a way to? Well, that, that was studied a few years ago. There was a, there was a joint study to, to look at that, and it did find that it could be feasible to do that. I think the, the preferred alternative then was a split diamond interchange, so it was something that was a little different than having two separate interchanges because of the proximity. Mm -hmm. But those are all things that as they went into a design, you know, would be, you know, would, would probably be opened up again. There was a few alternatives that were good. So the, the, the answer is yes, it did seem to be at that time very feasible to, uh, you know, as a, as a project to move ahead. But we'll be, you know, looking at that and other things. What are the implications of that on the region? And is that something that the county wants to move forward with or not move forward with? That's all part of the CTP. And it seems like it would alleviate some congestion and take some of the pressure off some of the traffic and some of those main, uh, Things within the county, such as Chapel Hill and other areas, mm -hmm. and I know the uh, Lee Road Interstate uh, mm -hmm. project. Should I say a widening project? Certainly, because mm -hmm. it has the east-west uh, connector um, approach. It will take that approach. It will take some pressure off of, of the uh, traffic here in Douglas County as well. Um, I have one last question, and I'm, I'm going to yield to our chairman of this committee. Um, Talk to me a little bit about the gas tax HB 170 a little bit regarding uh, implementable solutions for local funding. As you said, have you anybody had any yeah, sure. right. that? <laughs> yeah. We get the, the funding question a lot. Um, yeah. as, you, as you know, uh, Madam Chair, the HB 170 is the, the increase in the gas tax a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, a lot of that money went into the, the major mobility investment program that GDOT is implementing now. Um, and, and that is to build out the managed lanes, to improve the 20 interchanges, both on the east and the west, uh, the top end, uh, up 400. So a lot of that money is accounted for uh, in, in terms of those major projects. Um, some of the money also went to resurfacing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's also uh, some of that money, as Matt talked about, has been <coughs> used to kind of deal with some of the projects that were initially chasing federal money, federal funds um, to, and that had maybe environmental issues or some issues, they use that money to go ahead, mm -hmm. to go ahead and use that to actually build those projects. Mm -hmm. So that source is dried up. I mean, it's quickly being spent. Um, I'm sure David can talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. where it's going, but it's going fast. Mm -hmm. um, but we think it, it's, there's still opportunity to work with the department to identify mm -hmm. um, projects within that funding source. Okay, thank you. I'm yielding you. Chairman um, Roberts. Jefferson Roberts. Yeah, I, mean, I was I was sitting here processing them trying to took my thunder. I'm always talking about funds, but <laughs> <laughs> so, it, 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 I'm a, that gives me a, I can go a little bit deeper. And, and so again, it, it's, it's 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 the cookie cutter. Go, you know, if we're leveraging our local capital stack, you know, ten dollar to one dollar, leveraging it up, you know, leveraging it up to the state, to the feds, mm -hmm. et cetera. But I appreciate the commentary about House Bill, you know, one seventy nine. Everything that's coming out, right? Um, the reality is that, yeah, it's gone. Right. So, so while I, I appreciate the honesty um, of the sentiment, um, because one of the things that, as, as we sit here, one of the things I'm looking for this this tool to give me, the CT process, and not just, you know, we've got our colleagues here, it's not just a checkbox, right? Mm -hmm. Consistent, like, it's not just a checkbox, but I want to be able to use it. So, if, if in fact, it's like, okay, so you're saying that the state has dried up, so that's not much. We know we've got limited cash. Okay, so now, now take away the local operating that now just got to focus on. Right? It's like now I'm, I'm long term capital. Like now, how are we gonna pull this off? And Miguel has an appetite. <laughs> has an appetite, and so it's how do we, you know, so it's more that long term. 
So my question is, and I'm consistent through everybody to ask this, is that how will you help us deal with the long-term capital financing? So you, I heard somebody mention something about private investors. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how, how do you, I mean, this, it's gotta be, I gotta be able to use this tool. I mean, they need what they need to say, we're, we're, we're actually a, a, a qualified county, municipality, okay, whatever. But I need something that I'll be able to go to my citizen set and go check this out. Here's why we need a T splash. Here's the reality of that, right? This tool has to be something that leadership can use as well. Not just to be signed off by the state, but also it has to be able to accomplish certain things that says, okay, I'm sure we gotta go right now. But this tool has to be in such a way that it has to be so my question is, it, it, this is Jan they say it's January. How long would it mean you say a fifteen month, eighteen month process? How soon could you have at least a first pass on a framework, and I'm, I mean, I'm just asking. It's no right or wrong answer. Well, our our initial assessment is, and of course, we would have to define the, the, the scope in detail. Yep, I said it's like, but our initial assessment is, we can complete this between between somewhere in between twelve to, to fifteen months. Yep. So, I, ideally, we would like to have at least a solid draft nine months into, into right. the process. So stay with me. So nine months, but within three to six months, could you? Have you at least spoken to our citizens? Like yes. I'm saying, oh, the oh yeah, absolutely. About, go to them, get their input. We have at least have that draft, that milestone ready. I mean, I'm just trying to get a feel for your methodology, right? Because that's what I need to hear. Yes, absolutely. We we we, we absolutely can can develop that that initial uh, long list of projects right. that right. we can we can take to the to the citizens to basically, you you know, if if you're going to go for an additional. For additional funding of for for a TIS plus, you definitely want to show your citizens that you have a plan in place, Correct. Mm -hmm. and this is right. what you really want to right. accomplish. And they need to see themselves in it. So they need to see it. You don't have to go long because I got I got <laughs> <laughs> My last question though, because it's consistent across all of this, is okay. Yes, we've got the local intra uh, keg activities, the property rules, etc. But we are part of a bigger region, right? So yeah. how will you help us? Just like with our transit, where we spoke and we obviously um, partner with our neighbor. Um, will this this plan acknowledge our regional? Who we are as, as part of this region, or are you only focused on Douglas? Well, I, I think, think, we, right I think we, we, mentioned we mentioned that during 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 the presentation. Yeah. Absolutely, you, you, you are you are right there in, in the middle of the region. So you, this cannot be something in the vacuum, something isolated. It needs to be a, it needs to incorporate how how part of uh, how a Douglas fits into. Yeah. And using the model, looking at from a tool perspective yes. too, using the, the regional model as a tool, is going to mm -hmm. allow us to look at, at things. And we can look at different service, you know, so right. uh, there are different types of services that come out of there too, to see, okay, what are these types of trips doing? Not just right within those, but connecting areas. Correct. So now as we look at things like the, um, the Aerotropolis, which is growing, and right nearby, and that synergy that you have with that area, the synergy you have with the airport, those are all things that we need to look at. And, and up in the Cobb County, there's a lot of synergy between State Route 6 corridor and right. what's going on in Cobb County. Right. And so you're not, you know, we, we, that's the, the one thing that I think is clear from what we see the direction from ARC is that we don't want to just stop at the county boundary. We need to see how this relates. And that's and across all, you know, I mean, we've, we've done, done a lot of projects we've done. The Greenway Trail mm -hmm. idea, that's yeah. active transportation. Right. Mm -hmm. Transit, of course, the ATL, yeah. their call for projects will happen here. So this process will so allow you to draw and acknowledge my ARC partners here. There is an acknowledgement of the ATL as well. And again, I'm still learning out with all that the separation. But mm -hmm. is there, will this be synchronized with all? I mean, how does it work? Definitely, for sure. Yes. I mean, the, the ATL is developing the transit element of David's and ARC's mm -hmm. uh, larger regional That's transportation plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it will be definitely. Good enough. Miguel gets one quick question. Okay, okay very good. And and you can all. Uh, between Fabricio, Richard, and Matt, you can all fight as to who answers it, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a hypothetical, but it's actually something that we have uh, plenty of. You got a corridor that is maxed out, pretty well congested, and you have I-20 serving it, and there are people that live at the other end, and you need to give additional capacity, or at least figure out a way to get them for, off of I-20 and to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. What would your approach be for a situation like that? Well, of course, without getting into to the specifics, and, but mm -hmm. the first step is really take a look at the corridor and see how we can make the most with what we have. That's, that's the first step. You know, what's the long-hanging fruit? How can we buy some time so that could 
be done through, you know, additional signal coordination, through, mm -hmm. you know, looking at curb cuts, access management, intersection, how intersection improvements. improvements. So that's kind of the, the, the low hanging fruit. So with that, you, you in a way, you buy some time while you are st analyze and you really get the funds, be able to get the funds to really think about, okay, what's the long term solution? How, how can and you want to look at the corridors, and you know, that's the thing. And then you start looking at how that goes to, you know, to, to the future. Do we need to widen that corridor? What are, what can we do with our multimodal system? We're really just starting to get into that local bus and what that can do. Are there things we can do then with leveraging technology associated with that transit system? When we're looking all the way to 2050, it might change the whole conversation about how we're really utilizing that corridor and what effectiveness we can get. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that's a beauty of. Of, of looking at something, and, and again, the, what the things they were doing with the ARC model too, but looking at person trips. Well, how, how many people are we trying to move into a certain area? And as we look at these corridors, we'll be looking at how many people we want to move and what modes are available. So sort of the, the typical planning process is, you know, that whole idea where you have modes split in there. We often forget that mode split part of the four-step planning process. I mean, what trips are you going to generate? What are you going to, how are you going to, uh, you know, what modes are you going to put them on? And then how do you sign them to corridors and then to various facilities and parts of the Good program. answer. I, think <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have one thing yeah. to add. I think, I think you probably know this, but yeah. When you look at the long term, the funding never works. It's never going to work like that. And you come back and you buy the small piece where yeah. I can really get it for mm -hmm. Okay, so you hit one intersection, you hit another, and it's the worst part about going to the public when you tell them, oh, you just kicked the can down the road. I'm like, we did it. But we have to, to eventually get to the point where we can take the can and get it off the road entirely. Yeah. And that is the reality of that sometimes, just taking the, taking the small pieces of the funding you can use and working out for a while. Good point. Yeah. Grady, thank you for your bringing thank your you team out. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, no. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Essentially, um, you know, usually if you look at a corridor and you have a constraint, you look for ways to fix it, but the funding component dictates how you develop that. And so what I was looking for was, are they just thinking like, okay, intersection improvements, widening, or are they thinking, maybe there's a totally different way of addressing that need. What if we have transit and it took 25% of the volume of that corridor. So um, that is essentially um, what my angle was. Any one of these firms, uh, as you could see, has capabilities. They are strong in some areas. Some are strong in more areas. One essentially have the approach, we've done this before so many times, we can do it again. Another one had the approach, we know you, we've been here. 
and so we can continue to help you. And another one, um, I was perhaps impressed with the uh, number of angles that they had looked at in terms of statistics. They did their homework in terms of not only have we uh, analyzed your county, but here's how we would develop these different elements of a CTP. So, saying all that to say that any one of those firms can help. The question is, which one is more tailored to our needs? And essentially, that's a matter of, you've seen the technical analysis. Some were stronger uh, on the technical side than others. Um, now you've seen a qualitative component to it, and um, it's, it's a question of having a discussion about where, where, where your heart is relative to uh, what you're thinking and going for. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll just jump right in because I know everybody's got a goal, so I'll be succinct because I'm rich though. Um, but, but to that point, um, and, and I similarly asked a, a common question, and, and to your point, I'm trying to get to a point, well, how can I use this tool? I, I've been here long enough to watch. My, my, my credentials are full of studies and plans and all types of stuff, but I never really see them translated. They, they may, by osmosis and just by default, something gets done. But it, it's, it, there's no strategic intent. There's no true alignment with the operating budget. It's just sort of a, it's all on the side. And I just wanted to hear, okay, how will you leverage you know, the, the, the financial underpinning, right? Do you understand that there's multiple layers? Do you understand there's a regional impact, right? And to your point, I'm just, I'm just asking. I didn't really, I, mean, I already know my own answer, but I just want to see how um, they, they would approach it. I, I don't disagree. Um, very different firms um, from, from the degree of, you know, those who know us, those who done it, and obviously, um, they, you know, they, but here's the one thing that I did say, um, uh, and, and maybe it's a consistency, uh, is that I think they all appreciate what this process is about. Different approaches, but the question is, to me, to your point, which one is the best fit for us right now? It's about, for me, it's about fit. Because again, I can look at the technical, and that's like, it looks good on paper. You know, like resumes and anything else. I mean, you get technical writers to write it. It looks good. But when, when, I, when I'm in this room with these type of things, I'm trying to feel the people. I'm trying to feel well, who's listening. Who, who, how, how are they connecting? I mean, can they, are they giving me confidence that they can actually go do this? I mean, are they, I mean, is it about them or is it about us? And, and so that's all I was trying to get at. But that's, that was just my thoughts. So I'm done. Madam Chair, you want to say anything? Well, you know, I was I'm so impressed with all four, you know. Uh, certain from the breadth of experience in several uh, areas. Uh, one was specifically strong in technology, which we men mentioned earlier about uh, innovation. And their name was just, it was just apparent that Marvin Mobility was just, uh, they had a lot of um, forward thinking processes in place, uh, a lot of data driven. But the others were still strong with policies and support, uh, that support the funding that's needed to register projects where we're planning to go forth and done this kind of stuff. So I'm not an engineer, so I was impressed with quite a, you know, everything mostly. So I'm not an engineer, so it's very difficult for me to really. Uh, I did notice two things that separated the four. Two of the presenters or companies had DBE status. I did pick up on that, um, which we are looking to expand our DBE status in Douglas County. And the others did not discuss it or say, mention it, so I'm not sure if they had it. So are you aware all four of the DBE status bill? They would all four be required to meet the DBE. Okay. The main company itself may not be a DBE, but the required required yeah, to be a Yeah, Corey's, I obviously had DBEs in the room with them when they came into this. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you don't want to say nothing, you just want to sit here and monitor. You no, well, I'm monitoring everyone, but I, like, I have my top two, and uh, they're pretty close. Oh, you know me. Uh, can we just ask Dave real quick? Uh, do you have, have any take on, on what you heard today and what was strong and what was not strong? Yeah, I'm um, 
Well, I don't think I necessarily want to try to sway your opinion you know, towards one team or another. Um, I've worked with pretty much all of these teams in various forms over the years, and I would say that you as the, the client have a lot of say in what they focus on and what they don't focus on, and if there are certain themes that you want to emphasize, you can write that into your work scope. So if you want less engineering, more planning, more economic development, less this, you know, you can guide them in whatever direction you want. Good point. And I would think that all of the teams have the diversity of skills, the experience, the technical expertise to do a solid CTP for the county. Um, and I was actually thinking exactly what the commissioner said. A lot of it just boils down to the chemistry. Was there a team that you really connected with that you thought had the chemistry to work well together within the team, but also to work well with you? And would they listen? Do they understand what you're saying? Are they using the right words that you want to hear? And you know, it may just be as simple as that. Just what, what does your gut tell you about who do you want to work with? I understand. Are we ready? Yeah. I want to leave you in 10 minutes. All right, come on. Right. Then go. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So what, what, how you want to do this thing? I, I think, uh, I think it, it's probably a reasonable uh, approach to narrow it down to two. Narrow it to two. Now, there's only four voting members. Where is the area? All right, all right, so, all right, so that'd be fair. So, the top two, just pick the top two. Most of the ones in the box, just the top two. And then we select them. All right, all right, let's go for it. All right, so, my little valley, myself. Okay, all right, so, all right, 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 all Um, 
I like DHB simply because, uh, you know, too, because they are working on projects locally here in Douglas County, the Road Extension Project, and then also the Bill Ricker Master Plan. That's what I heard just about, just had a couple of notes. So it seems like they're already acclimated to Douglas County. Yeah. So. So those, and then I did look at Jacob's, uh, the planner had 13 years planning experience, but his experience was mostly Henry Forsyth and Boyd. They had counted. Uh, and I saw inclusive, all of them had about 100, 100 years of experience. I did take notes on that. Uh, they were very inclusive and transparent. It's just most of their experiences in Forsyth, Henry, Henry and Fayette, and then I just did, and I just jotted down for the PHP that they actually are working on projects in Douglas. And they, that tells me they're uh, familiar with the landscape. And that's it. Because all I can do. I'm Based on that, do. we have a two to two tie. Right. Now, uh, Commissioner, how do you want uh, a two? <laughs> well, well it, this, it, at, at this point, this is mm -hmm. just be. It, we're not at the general assembly or anything like that where the chairman would actually make the recommendation for it. I said, put these two before the full board of commissioners and we just talk about them ourselves. You know, all you can do is present it. Yep. Just keep it clean. It goes to the full board. Um, here's the recommendation to the top two. And we talk to them. Yep, that's all we can do, right? Because we we, re we assembled this meeting. It's like, you got to be here to vote. You need that. You need that fifth vote. To keep this clean, well, that is the, the results that we recommend these two up to the full board of commissioners to solve. You, you got right now, you got this meeting, and then we got one final meeting of the year. Mm -hmm. yep. So those were the top two in the technical in the the track, whatever. Whatever. They were consistent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And I'm okay with getting like, the full board. So are we okay as a, we'll make a recommendation? Yep. I know you got help. All recommendations. Yes. Tracks, uh, so. I, I make a motion that we recommend to the full board of commissioners uh, the two top candidates uh, for the comprehensive transportation plan update that have been identified here today, which are Jacobs and BHB, and let the full board make the decision. Sorry. There's a motion. I motion it, you motion it, I motion second. All in you know, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh oh. Aye. Is there anything else that needs to come before this? Um, nothing yeah. that nothing that cannot wait. <laughs> With that being said, thank you gentlemen for coming. Everybody, thank you. This meeting's adjourned. Gentlemen, thank you so much.